Welcome everybody to the Asylum Podcast. We were talking. Once again, I, I'd I'm ask sorry. them if they're ready. They say yes, and then they carry on with the conversation. So Look, it was a good conversation. Okay, it was a good conversation. I get you that. Uh, we're just celebrating three months on Madness's channel. Of why you would sub to him, I don't know. I don't know why you would. I did subscribe, and not only did I subscribe to him, I'm pretty sure that I subscribed to you to Madness as well. Probably and Super Mac and all stars. the other streamers yeah, who take more, part in this podcast. more than just three months, isn't it? You've got, you've got like literally hundreds of months from other people subscribers to his channel. Pretty much. Um, it was a good. It was a good month. Let's put it that way. <laughs> like I said, it was you get them in before he saw his bank balance, and then it's like you need to stop that. I had to just bribe me. my way onto the podcast somehow, okay? Yeah, <laughs> we do take bribes, I'm just, it's clear, it's obvious. It's, <laughs> no, it's I, I do as well. And we all do take bribes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, I just realised there's freaking music going on in the background. I'll stop that. That might be a little bit mm. easier to hear us. Uh, let's know oh. if there's any sound issues otherwise. Um, oh, do you want to drop me a few millimeters? Because at the moment I'm just dancing off the bottom of the uh, the orange. It's like because a you've got like, like it. it's because your neck is on the line. If I drop you down, you're like your head's just peeking over the orange thing. That's why I put you up oh. on purpose. Is, do you want me to do you want me to sit up a bit? Yeah, that's better. Then I can put you back down where you're supposed to be. And I feel really small compared to the two of you. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just making giant instead. Oh, I should probably host you. I found a place you want to move. There we go. <laughs> oh, <'cause> <laughs> we're really well organised this evening. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I, well, so, uh, yeah, basically, I sat there ready to stream and then everybody else turned up going, uh, oh, is it today? Uh, nine o'clock. Oh, right. Okay, so again, yeah, we're a little bit out of sorts at the moment, I'm afraid. Oh. Um, Bunton, why are you no longer a mod? Do you... Has he ever been a mod in your channel? I'm sure he has. He is now. Is Congratulations. <laughs> Whether it's, he has he's like, changed no. my bot before. Maybe he turned it off. Or he's just rejected it. Obviously. He will have it. <laughs> oh oh my god. Yes. Now there was a slight panic because I did. I I've only been doing the show, doing a podcast for over a year, but um, I did think it was at nine thirty we started today for some reason. Uh, I just I just didn't want to get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not feeling very well, are you? No, I'm dying. He's I've got, I got, I, I caught one of the really horrible flu bugs. No joke. On um, on Friday, got home from work, and I was fine. Took the puppy for a walk to the park. Fine. The moment I walked through the door, I started shaking really violently. So I got into work, I got into work, got into bed with all my work gear on, and I was still shaking. And it's like puppy was not good. Yeah, that's what exactly what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. No, there's been a lot of the really bad strain of flu going around this year. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if you caught something like that. This is only the Did second time in my life I've had flu. Stream of flu. I thought you said that. No, not stream of flu. Really, it's a really bad a case of strain of flu. Of flu. Yeah. Yeah, Stra okay. Yeah. Anyone that streams Star Citizen comes down with it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I noticed the numbers. That's what I thought maybe has happened to all the streamers that were streaming Star Citizen. They've come down with stream of flu. I think that's, oh, that's probably dear. what it is. God. Yeah. Right. So, Let's close this uh, how are you all? I'm sure you've been a mod before, Bunsen. He says thanks for your stress. I swear he's been changing my bot because I've told him that it's not. It's like a crappy bot, the school bot. But anyway, you're welcome. I bet it's part <laughs> of the master plan. I bet he, it, this is his second account. Yeah. Bunsen. <laughs> 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 yeah. Just tried to take over all Star Citizen streamers. <coughs> Oh my gosh, sorry. Oh, dear. Right, so, um, Star Citizen. This is week. So, what, has, anyone, has anyone been up to anything this week or last week that they want to talk about? That was... I still haven't completed a single mission. Way! <laughs> 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 but I don't know if that will have been fixed in <laughs> this week's hotfix. You know, so, I need to give it a go. <laughs> do you know what was so funny? You now they did the hotfix, right? And the hotfix was saying to do with claiming ships and insurance and stuff. Yeah. I logged on, no word of a lie, you can watch my VOD. I logged on this afternoon to play for a little bit. 
And the first thing that I couldn't do was claim my saber. It was not. It wouldn't work <laughs> at all. Completely I love those holy guys. And I was I actually... like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. it didn't work. I had to leave the game and come re-log in again. And then, of course, it did work. But um, I couldn't. I saw it. an absolutely amazing um, picture on Reddit today. Actually, I didn't put it into the doc because I don't think it was funny enough. However, um, you know the glitch that they supposedly fixed where our ships spawn without doors? Uh, yes. Somebody has a picture of just a load of doors floating and in no space. Ship. And my immediate reaction was, so that's where my doors have gone. <laughs> it's probably partly that and partly that you now can spawn doors with no ship instead. <laughs> so you just oh, yeah. fly Beautiful. around with loads of doors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've reversed the bug. Thirsty. Well done, CIG. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well, they always they always say that it's not it's not a they say it's like they say it's a hot fix, but I'm always kind of like it's not really fixed, is it? Usually, because most of these things they do come back again at some point. So, yeah. So many. Well, bugs it, no, I mean the thing with a hot fix is it fixes that specific thing, um, but it doesn't allow for anything else potentially going wrong afterwards so yeah. it may well fix that spawning bug where it wasn't working however that doesn't mean another one's not going to get created when they put that one in um yeah, which causes exactly. it again so yeah that's half the problem is you get that oh yeah but other than that i mean for myself personally this week i mean i've been playing witcher subnautica um i played um the hunt with miz um which was which was which was really funny getting <laughs> scared witnessed by spiders which was fantastic dungeons and dragons on friday which was a really great episode that miz did and it was fantastic I had a great time <sighs> um and then what else oh god uh, and yeah just that's just that's just the gaming side of things like i say like been great it's been a really pretty week with lots of different things going on so um i yeah. i actually i fell asleep watching you guys play Thanks. dungeons and dragons Thanks. it was really erotic i i really enjoyed it to be fair <laughs> it was so um, good i fell quite... asleep that i mean that's the sort of advertising you want isn't it <laughs> there's there's quite a lot of you though isn't well not this week there wasn't but normally um, there's quite a lot of you yeah, which surprised me it's a big group they've got seven players so i don't know whether it will stay that way because we've all just started mm. and there'll be might somewhere the commitment might be too much and stuff mm. but um yeah so at the moment it's like seven players but the, the difficulty is like i'm dming it and i haven't touched dungeons and dragons before in my life um and nor is half the people playing so it's kind of all new for everybody so yeah we're learning it as we go um and then there's like obviously some are a little bit more combat orientated whereas some are a little bit more with the role play and the story side so it's all i think that's what makes it interesting though because i've never really seen it from a noob perspective yeah because i've only ever watched critical role and from yeah, the very get-go critical role bar. they knew what they knew what they were doing you know so. <laughs> it's quite a, uh, yeah we're not quite in that league i would say we're we'll probably be there in about oh, another week I, or two i reckon yeah give it a week we'll have 50 60 000 viewers <laughs> yeah we're we're aiming for it we're they're, they're like here we're in another room so, <laughs> so last so last year critical role is i mean it's, it's, that yeah, one it's where it's at well clearly because they, they they killed off their campaign and they've started again so yeah <laughs> exactly they're feeling threatened already we're feeling threatened yeah. the they know who we are they know they know but no, it, um, it's good so, fun yeah. it's um something a little bit different and uh i think like um you know it gets you helps you do a bit of improv as well get a bit of inter-character, which might be quite nice for Star Citizen for those that like to sort of try and fill their role as well, I think. You know, some people do like to sort of role-play in these sort of games as well, so you never know. Yeah. Madness might be going around as an actual pirate with a hat on. <laughs> <Nobody else. laughs> or it'd just what be an elf in space. I, would... <laughs> I think I'm giving off, I'm giving off the wrong impression about myself. I'm not a pirate. I don't... Uh... I don't know pirate. what you actually call yourself. I so. just, it's, I'm not a pirate. Just I'm mass, just ready to go as a killing wanker. people. Mur mass murderer. <laughs> uh, um, with, a grit, with a cheeky smile that enjoys uh, shooting people in my spaceship. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll find out. I'm I'm going to be a farmer probably. So that's the way I'm going to be in Star Citizen. What, or a, a miner. Farmer? Judging on <laughs> judging on reverse the verse. Like they were talking about mining the way they were talking about it. And like they're really excited about it. Granted, he's doing the mining, so he would be excited about what he's doing. I'm going to say now, I was watching Reverse of Verse for the second time earlier. 
fell asleep watching it. Can you see a trend here? <laughs> and... Moist is tired. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. Um, and I wasn't really paying attention at all until they mentioned the mining. And I'm not interested in mining, but the way that there, I'm sure we're going to talk about this in a bit anyway. But uh, so I'll stop talking about it in a second. No, but the way, no, no, no. the way no. that they're going to implement mining, where like it's a mixture between like a drilling beam and a tractor beam, is kind of in my head how mining lasers kind of worked in Eve Online. Yeah. You know, that's how it pulls it into the ship as well as drilling. I, the whole thing just really interests yeah. me. So, yeah, I can't wait for. Uh, I can't wait to see more of it. <laughs> it makes sense i mean that's a good it's a good way of like bringing back the you know the, the mining stuff that they're cutting off by using the tractor beams to pull it in and that as well mm. I th i'm sure didn't um elite dangerous do that was it the droids that brought them back it's it, yeah it was the drones, droid the drones really yeah. limpets sorry i'm kind of surprised they're not going down that like... route actually considering with this new ship that we'll talk about a bit later is that they're getting the droids to do just about everything it kind of it's almost like these droids are becoming the one fix all thing so yeah kind of surprised they didn't copy that and send out the droids to go and get the mining material speaking, the droids. speaking of elite dangerous uh one thing i did do this week um i've spent some more money <laughs> please don't judge me dad Please don't judge me, Dad. <laughs> By Dad, I mean Madness. <laughs> um, so Maya is a really bad influence on me. Um, I'm going to say that now because Maya talked me into buying a PlayStation 4 Pro so I could play Monster Hunter. And when I say talked me into, I watched his stream. Um, and this week, he's talked me into buying an Oculus Rift. Um, now... I was an early backer of the Oculus. I didn't get uh, a DK1, but I had a DK2 quite early on. And um, the one game that absolutely blew my mind in virtual reality was Elite Dangerous. While it's a very repetitive, grindy game, let me fucking tell you, the first time you come out of warp uh, mm -hmm. at a sun, it's mind-blowing. And the, the thing that really hit me with that is I could feel the heat on my face. I know that sounds really fucking stupid, but my brain somehow was making me think I'm that melting. I was hot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the first time was that, that the, my canopy... Was that the sound as well? Yeah, and the first yeah. time that my canopy um, breached, that was terrifying. And I had um, a really... Again, my mind just completely tripped out. And I actually saw a video on YouTube of this um, this week, actually. I forget what the term is called, but there's a proper scientific term for tricking people into thinking that they're seeing their real limb when they're not. And, like, right, you stab yeah. them and they feel the pain. Um, but I had an X-55 HOTUS, which is pretty much exactly what it looks like in game and my hands were in exactly the same places as the characters in game and they move to match and i remember <laughs> looking freaky. down as i scratched my nose and saw my hand still there but felt the scratching on my nose and my head freaked out it was the weirdest thing that ever happened what have i life. done <laughs> <laughs> i really felt like i had ghost limb uh, syndrome um but yeah that was just really bizarre but the whole thing is just mind blowing just being able to look up right to track your target when you're fighting um is just I, I can't describe what it's like so yeah i've actually bought um an octus rift really looking forward to playing elite dangerous and i'll be playing it on stream um nice. and uh the second game that i'm really looking forward to is star trek bridge crew they're, they're so the, well i the star trek bridge crew is the one i've seen people do the most least on stream and it's yeah. just funny because it's doing it's, it's crazy. I don't it's, know. Are they expanding on that, or is it just like this I don't is a know? I I I kind of released. I think for this whole generation of VR, I think everything that we're going to see for this generation, and I don't think there's much life left in this generation. I'm a bit of an idiot, really, by jumping into it now. I said right, I was going to yeah. skip this generation, but I can guarantee you, in a couple of months, right, they will announce the new. Generate. I know that they've got the pro generation. versions of the Vive coming out, yeah. um, but I'm not really interested yeah, in the Vive because I, I I don't really want to do room scale. I'm more interested just being lazy and yeah. setting my ass at my desk. Um, <laughs> but um, I just want to hop into it towards the end. Um, and yeah, I think everything that we're going to see right now is going to be very demo-ish, but everything for the next generation will be more gameplay um but as far as i'm concerned the way that i kind of look at star trek bridge crew is a bit like D, &D 
really. You know, it's okay. you and three of your mates just yeah. hopping into some sort of like campaign thing for a few hours and just kind of role playing. And yeah, I, I can't wait for that. I think it's going to be hilarious. So uh, it's me, Maya, one of Maya's other um, viewers has a copy of it. So we just need a fourth person and then we'll have a lot of fun. Nice. I look forward to seeing Ooh. those then. Because I know, yeah, the, the VR stuff, I've never actually tried it yet, but um, it does look fun. And it, it, you can tell with VRs, because they obviously, we've had this well, a long time ago in the past when they tried VR to take off and it didn't take off. But now I think yeah, where you can see, uh, there's an article today about the police now are actually using it. And they're using it for uh, going around and training purposes to interrogate, like going to houses and do mock scenarios and things like that. So once like industries start picking up and using it, and the wider that spreads, then the more money that will get plugged into one, it rather than it being abandoned like some things. One of the case studies that made me realise that it, it doesn't matter what happens, VR will will be a thing now um, was actually before the consumer versions came out. Um, somebody had a DK2. And uh, he was like a nobody at this um, uh, architectural firm. Um, he didn't have a paid job there yet. Uh, he was just making the teas. Um, and he was sat at his desk one day and he had taken his VR, uh, DK2 in and he had mapped um, a, and blocked out a, um, a level of a building that they were designing. And as he was working on it in his lunch hour, one of the directors of the company walked past and saw the headset and said, what is this? <laughs> what so he said, doing? sit down and have a look. And now that company uses Oculus Rifts to show their customers what the buildings are going to yeah, be like, be amazing, you know, yeah. and I just think that's fucking awesome. And doctors are using them for medical training as well, for surgeries and stuff like that. You know, it's just fantastic. Yeah, I think the, but the if... biggest difference we've got now is with being able to have, like, the smaller headsets and things and being able to be more mobile with it is allowing it, uh, other industries to, to take it on, I think, and use it. And when that starts happening, I think you, you definitely get, like you said, it's going to be a product that will it will get developed further and it's got to take off because it's got to be a big enough amount of backing for people to, for companies to carry on and actually survive the initial mm -hmm. cost and doing research into it. And then... So the more that you get that, the the better technology and the better, like you said, second wave, third wave is the even better. And what's quite nice is if you get like the couple of companies fighting against each other, it's it's a bit shit where you don't get the cross platform. But what you do do get is them trying to one up each other all the time, which then gives you better technology on that front as well. Uh, I think I you would just be... have one person. Yeah, Me personally, I'm not uh, until they can figure out how to make it so you don't throw up. I'm not really. Um, I still don't think. I still think it's heavily limited. Personally, Do you I never. The for only certain, for certain things, it's very good, but generally, uh, I'm... the only I've... the only time I had problems like that was one if I was playing a game that wasn't designed for VR, um, and two generally um, first person games where you're actually running around on foot. Um, that's why you see a lot of teleporting mechanics. So yeah, I agree with you, but the games that I enjoy anyway are the cockpit experiences. So Elite Dangerous, Project Cars, um, Euro Truck Simulator. Euro Truck Simulator is the thing that got me into VR in the first place, because just being able to look left and right yeah. at a junction There's... makes a huge fucking difference. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you can imagine just being that slightly bit better just for that. But I also yeah, think they did yeah. say that they kind of found out <laughs> Well, they know some of the reasons why that motion sickness happens, and I think it is also to do with the pixels and the resolution and things like that. And yeah, they they know, and they yeah. them, it's easily something that they will tackle. I and mean, I, I, don't think I would say, to everybody either. So, if you want to try VR, don't try this generation. I would hold off for the next generation because when we can have easily 4K each, in fact, the Pro version I think of the Vive is going to have 4K each eye. Um, I think that will almost completely eliminate um, the screen door effect and the screen door effect is when you can see the black lines between the pixels a bit like you can with uh, low res monitors um yeah it's so here's it, my thing then bringing it on to star citizen because otherwise mm -hmm. we'll be, we were talking just about um uh, vr yeah. the the how would you implement it for star citizen without feeling sick with current, um, this, with current this, based on current technology because next generation stuff is like all oh, very well and good but i ain't got it yet let's just, this, let's just say you still feel nauseous how would you do it i me personally i wouldn't use vr for star citizen i would use my head tracker that's, well, not everybody that's the only way i could do nauseous, it though, so i don't 
I don't want you know if you're someone that does get nauseous with it. Then I suppose there isn't. Much let me you can do let about me tell it. you something. E you e will e you will get na nauseous, and the reason I say that is because Star Citizen is going to have um, tied animations, like locked in animations, as far as I'm aware. So when your character is forcing you onto the ladder and your head is bobbing, <laughs> it's just going to fucking make that will make you throw up. <laughs> you know. So um, yeah. yeah, I would use my head track personally, or I would only pull on the headset, I'd use my monitor and then only pull on the headset when I get into the ship, like you'd pull on your helmet in the ship or something like that, yeah. you know. I mean, the, the, they, they are not making it VR, but they're making it VR capable. They've obviously seen that it's going to be popular, so like with the whole yeah. um, Moby Glass, I think that's part of the reason why they're doing the things that they're doing is so that it's going to be able to use in VR, so... It, it's probably good that they're thinking about it rather than it being completely an oversight to add it in afterwards. Um, but how much it's being thought about, it's hard to hard to know exactly. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, Sorry. I think I think for them, them Sig uh, implementing uh, VR is. I'm I'm sure they're thinking about it now and they're trying to work out the best way to do it. But it is going to be a really difficult task. But say, say that, you know, we are on the next gen of technology and everything else. Would you would you use it in Star Citizen? Would you use it for all of it, or would you use it just for maybe just? I wouldn't mind? use it for all of it. I would not use it for FPS. Um, I don't think I'd use it for. I'd use it for like, if I was standing on the bridge of like the six hundred I, and I just wanted, to, and I was on a beautiful Palm Beach island somewhere, and I just wanted, to, or standing on the bridge of it, or whatever outside looking at a beach, looking at an alien planet, watching the worlds go by. Literally, it would be for me, it would be for stationary situations, just to get the awe and the impression of how amazing the game is. But I wouldn't use it for anything else other than that. That would be, honestly, because of the nausea, really. Again, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily even use it for that. And the reason I say that, have you used VR before, Madness? Right, how do you so know so the, the, you can talk about the nausea the, when you haven't even tried it? <laughs> <laughs> the issue, yeah, the, the nausea barely affects people these days, um, unless you suffer with motion sickness quite a lot. Um, oh, there we go. Um, That's why but the it. issue that you have, if you are thinking to yourself, you'll put on this headset and your vision will be filled with this beautiful scene, it's not the case. Um, what you have is it's like looking through these, right? No joke. And you see a lot of black and you have to focus on the very center. Um, and if you try to look around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This and it's because, it's it's, I want. I want it's because. It's not what I want. IMAX screen all around me kind of scenario. Exactly. It's because they can't fit screens big enough into the headsets yet. No, there are um, lesser known um HMDs that have been able to fill more of your uh, vision, uh, but uh, I don't necessarily want to invest into companies that I don't know that well yeah. and haven't really been tried and tested. Um, so that's why I'm saying just completely skip this generation. Let's see You're what happens quite a few with generations away. Probably, I think so. I think so. I I can't imagine that VR will be um used by the general public rather than just hardcore gamers for another you know not until i'm like 50 60 realistically yeah. you know well technology goes fast though when when they've got <coughs> enough people backing it and going into it so it's potential that it could go a lot faster than that uh, what it comes down to it's the same with um mobile phone okay so microsoft the, the thing that they really fucked up well apart from their shitty mobile operating system was they just did not invest enough money into encouraging app developers to develop apps for the platform like i am not going to use a windows phone because grinder's not fucking available on windows it's just shit so essentially in terms of vr <laughs> it comes down to how <laughs> are you going to put grinder on much... vr otherwise <laughs> No yeah, man. I'm so, well, it's, it's, it's something similar already. Um, is that but... like blink, blink right, or is that blink left on grinder? Like, <laughs> wink, if like. wink, mm -hmm. wink if you like. Wink if you like. But it's going to come down to however much money that Facebook are willing to invest into the developers of these games, and the same for um, for Valve. 
and I, I'm pretty damn sure that Valve are probably investing a lot more money into it than Facebook yeah. are at this yeah. point. So I think they're playing the long game, and I think they're probably going to win. Wait, it's, yeah, I, mean, cool. I, I don't know. I, I, my, the, for me, the jury is still out, personally, on virtual reality. Um, it's been around since I remember, since Hackers. They're watching a dude on a stupid little bench with a black beam around him, kind of pretending to punch things and like goggles on and stuff. Yeah, that was the first um, one. So that's the first time when I tried it and it failed. But you know, it's and it failed miserably. And we've got the new one, which is far improved, but it still has its limitations. So I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Don't get me wrong. I really am hopeful. But I agree. I think Track IR and the face over FOIP system and all that sort of stuff is going to be more relevant to my game experience with Star Citizen going forward. Um, but I hope virtual reality. Does have a big well, that's, play. I mean, that's future. definitely conflicting anyway. Um, the, the FOIP thing that they want to put in the game <coughs> and VR are just not compatible because um, you're not going to be able to face scan and do your facial expressions. Uh, in... Incorrect. <laughs> How? Um, you got a big they, thing the there is already face. working technology within headsets that can track your eyes so they can see where you're looking. And yeah, I get um, they also have case studies where they have sensors on the bottom of the headset to track. Um, your mouth as well. So, so they're building into um, the, the headset rather than the face rig stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which so, I think is really cool. Okay, well that's... I mean, the, what I would think would be quite cool is um, augmented reality as well with Star Citizen. I mean, if they do bring out yeah. the kind of like the hologram systems and stuff, I mean, how cool would that be? Oh on, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're theory crafting here and this is way yeah. beyond because of other things <laughs> cool like if you could have like you know like the kind of obi-1 kind of hologram projection type of stuff that you could kind of do with your phone or create like i don't know some sort of augmented kind of details and stuff as well i'm sure star citizen will get on board with everything that's that's the latest tech when the game is finished and and we're there i'm uh i'm more than hopeful for that but i want to talk about something else called the vulcan nah do we have to? Okay, well, Nobody wants this. to talk about it anymore. Nobody wants to talk about the Vulcan. <laughs> Fine. Boring. So long. Well, you know, madness, news. madness. You know what? If it stops you having a bitch fit, let's just talk about the Vulcan. Shall we? It probably. But the thing is, it probably won't stop It's because I've never done the Earth. So it's just a different bitch fit. <laughs> it's just a different bitch fit. But no, I mean, if people want to carry on talking about VR, you can do, but I've never done it. So I'm just going to go and have a pee and then I'll come back and tell you how it was in full HD. <laughs> okay. Why do you take a video for us? <laughs> We're just going to go over to a, a commercial break while Madness streams himself having a pee. <laughs> uh, Capital um, Live says, uh, I enjoyed VR a lot, but... Go uh, on, uh, you, sorry, I enjoyed VR not? a lot when I tried it, but like Noodle said, oh. it's really got to be a game designed for it and in an environment designed for it. Definitely not worth getting into this generation for me. But I'm curious about the future of VR. Yeah, I am under no illusion whatsoever that I've just bought a £400 demo machine. Because <laughs> it is. On, Most on, of the games are demos. On, you a, know. on a good closing line, by the time Star Citizen is released, we're probably going to be there with VR as well. So, Yeah, you know, in 2042, <laughs> Delayed, um, we Star should Citizen be good. again. Because <laughs> virtual reality generation 2 is out. We have Yay. to get it implemented. Redo the whole game again for virtual reality compatibility. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like yeah. honestly it'd be like Howard Hughes is when he did the um, Hells Angels things he just about to finish it spent millions of pounds oh guess what came around the corner coloured freaking film <laughs> fuck it redo the whole shit again <laughs> again um, okay, so let's, yeah. let's uh, move on then to so you want to go straight on to the Vulcan Thing. Well, I mean, we can talk about. I mean, this is we're in conversation. We're going to be in conversation street. I think I don't know, Miz, if you're cool. We we'll, we can do the. We'll just talk about everything. So we'll bring everything that's relevant and go with everything. So we'll bring ATV in board. We'll bring reverse the verse. Everything that's relevant to what we're talking about, rather than going. We're going to do Reddit. Then we're going to do ATV. Then we're going to do. Yeah, I think no, we'll just bring it all into the mix, and we'll talk um, about everything that anyone wants to talk about, basically. So just before we start that, um, if anybody wishes to um, ask us any questions, an exclamation mark question in chat will bring up the form. I've just done it for you there. If you click on that, you can ask us questions. If you are a patron to our channel, you will have access to our Discord patron channel, and you can ask us questions on there as well. Um, and we might, I'm thinking we're going to go... We're gonna, actually, I'm feeling confident. We might do a situation where, as well, where we're going to go through... We'll answer questions as well as we're going on. So we'll do chat and conversation between us, and then we'll maybe pick up a few questions if people have put questions in the doc as we go along, and we'll answer some of those, and we'll talk about those questions, and we'll just kind of 
flow with the news and you guys and chat and kind of keep it really open and fresh and try something a bit different. Questions help the conversation flow. Yeah. Because <laughs> we don't talk about bullshit flow. for ourselves. You know, we need, we need questions to feed that bullshit. Yeah, right. And I'm just going to preempt the question now. Yes, I have redone my hair. Thank That's you. why the green screen didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Oh, wow. right. you so did choose let's, let's go choose and, any... um, purple. Let, let's start talking about um, the Vulcan then, because that was obviously the main focus of ATV uh, this week. So, yes. um, so first of all, we started yes. off with I don't know. You got a couple of things from is it Reddit or something? But um, yeah, I got a couple of pictures. There were just a few things about it, but I mean, we can use the, the ATV video, footage. The video. Yeah, let's take the video. Oh, take the video yeah, on it. I mean, the first thing is is the Reddit guys is I. I agree with one of the Reddit comments, which was that the styling of it does, if you look at it from a certain angle, does have a Master Chief kind of look about it from Halo. The kind of the, I don't know if you've seen that. What you're on about? I, I agreed with the Combine Harvester picture. And the Combine Harvester <laughs> picture. I agree with that one as well. They both, well I they just both. realized that right. we're not going to go on that scene mm -hmm. for the moment until I fix the oh. cameras. <laughs> so unprofessional. <laughs> this is because people turned up at the last minute. Late. It wasn't my fault. It's after. Okay. Yeah, it no, wasn't. No, it was <laughs> There was me. I take full responsibility. I completely screwed up this week, and I'm very unprofessional of me. Um, but yeah, no. I, I mean, the styling of the Vulcan for me is again like all. I never have. There are very few ships that start it and have done that. I go, that's a dog. And the Vulcan isn't a dog. It's not the prettiest ship in the world, but it's not a dog. Um, and it's grown on me a little bit. It has kind of terrapin qualities, shall we say. Kind of a bit I think, of a brick. I mean, one of the first kind of things of about it is the fact that, well, for me, it's kind of, well, the look, there's there's a lot of things about someone saying, is it Elite Dangerous? There's another game where they're saying it looks almost like exactly the same. It does look like an Elite Dangerous ship, mm. but Ooh, do we know I, I don't want to play a game where it's full of pretty ships because I might as well just be playing one of those really dodgy Facebook games where they've just ripped ships from other games. You know, it's like, I want ships to look different and i want yeah an industrial styly ship thing that's my description of it to um to look industrial styly you know so um it's uh, what, what can they make it look like it's, it's it's a box for carrying drones for fuck's sake <laughs> yeah i mean and the thing is that we all we've all grown up with different um, sci-fis and like with, like with the D and D thing, we're reading fantasy books and things like that. And no matter how many times you try to reinvent the wheel, you're you're taking influences from that is. That, and I'd rather they play other games and take influences from other games because I've played quite a few MMOs where they they the developer has made the full game and then you jump in and you play it for about five minutes. And you feel like that this developer has never played an MMO in their life. So, because they haven't tried other games. So, I do think that you can't help but be influenced. And sometimes it's subconsciously you're influenced by these things as well. It's not like they sat there and put two pictures up and said, right, let me just copy that and make it slightly different. Sometimes you're just sitting there and you're playing with things. Oh, this looks really cool. And then when you actually show it to people, they turn and say, yeah, you do realize something that's been made very similar to that. Yeah. If, if you give a room full of designers... Uh, a so task, you, and you you, you tell them what the role of an X thing is, um, and you tell them it has to have this, 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 and it does this and this and this. Um, you know, you, you're going to have an occasion where two designers are going to have something very similar. You know, and it's like you said in a in a world that's so full of sci-fi. In, a, in world. a world. In a world. <laughs> as soon as somebody says that, you have to do in a world where danger. Do you know? Do you know who the voiceover guy was who penned that phrase? Don Lafontaine, who passed was away, it? I think, two, three years ago. But a friend oh. of mine, uh, Kenny, can do. He's a voiceover guy from America and uh, from Alabama, Oklahoma, wow. um, and he can do that perfectly it's amazing um but i'm going to say as the designer here <laughs> i don't know, I mean you guys i mean as the designer here you, what you tend to get and i agree you, what you tend to get is you just get designers look at the same kind of reference materials yeah and come up with 
It's like thing storyboarding, is, it isn't has... it? You kind of chuck all the things. So, what does a transport look like? And you chuck up loads of pictures of lorries. What does this look like? You chuck yeah. up, pictures, and then that's yeah. what you do. You kind of storyboard, look at different influences, yeah. and then you put that together to design something. Yeah, and there will be similarities to a degree. Certain things will have because they have to because it's again it's connecting from a futuristic thing to something that we kind of identify now and kind of go that kind of makes sense. That's the kind of thing that I would expect. You know, I mean, based on our experience of tractors like people with the combine harvester or you know industrial type of machinery it's like that well yeah that makes sense because that's the references that they've been using to move it forward it's kind of that weird you know um parallels of, of design and, and and stuff like that but you do get different i mean there's no question like there will be different designs they're not the same but they have similarity i would say looking at the video now i would say in terms of um inspiration for that ship i would say less elite dangerous and more it kind of looks like a type someone um, put a picture on it. it was the very it was the front cockpit bit which does look yes yeah, it looks like very, type very seven. Similar. i agree it's with that it's the or shape is it type of nine it i forget the, um the but either side, i think i would say it looks more like a freaking homeworld ship than an elite dangerous ship i mean i'm gonna say this I don't. I didn't get an Aegis vibe straight away when I no. saw it. I was thinking more Anvil and other. Mm. I didn't get the Aegis vibe. I was like, because it has like the kind of the closing canopy similar to the Carrick, which is Anvil, and the same with the Terrapin has the closing kind of like the armor and everything. I was like, Are you sure this is Aegis or is Aegis <laughs> ripping off Anvil? I was like, I don't quite get that bit. For me, it was a bit. And I think I was like, also, I was like, Aegis has got a lot of ships. You know what I mean? Like, surely somebody else could make the ship rather than Aegis. They've they've got a lot of ships already. Yeah, this is it's to do just... with the asset usage. So they, like we said, they've, they've got multiple Maybe. people working on multiple ships, and if they've got more assets done for an Aegis ship, then it's quicker for them to chuck one of those ships together. Really. Yeah, possibly. I'm just remember what I said last week. I just did not want a combat ship, and I'm glad that we have. One, something that's not necessarily a combat ship, and two, like, yeah, I, I'll probably buy one for ramming stuff, you know, because I like ramming stuff in ships. Actually, no, I probably shouldn't because the cockpit's at the front, damn it. Um, but, um, well, it yeah. is a combat, it is a co cop, it's a combat ship, but it's oh, not, okay. it's, it's not, not necessarily purebred. You can do other stuff with it, you, you can know? do other stuff with it, but not the other thing that I'm happy. Like the other thing that I'm happy about is that while it's not necessarily a starter ship, it is a nice step up. What I would like to see, however, are more starter ships. You know, I, I think just the option. Well, so of that, the two well, that is leads a bit, nicely yeah. onto this to topic because they kind of well, there's been a, that's one of the big debates that's been about at the moment is that they they said a starter ship. Well, they I don't know if they said starter ship or st starter support Correct. or role. The and the so loads of people are going that's fucking expensive for a starter ship how can you charge so much for a starter ship and i think their argument is it's it's a starting profession ship yes it's, it's their new thing now Getting i'm sorry two hundred dollars two hundred surely your starter ship yeah. is a start in the profession it's but what i mean what gets me more than anything is and, and I'm, I'm i'm kind of two ways about this one because um they've been going on a lot about how they don't they want this is the reason we've got specific shop ships for stuff so we've got a ship for refueling we've got a ship that's supposed to just repair we've got a ship for transport and they don't want us having ships that can do everything they don't want a jack of all trade ships that's what they kept telling us and then they go first ship they announced in 2018 oh look at this jack of all shades ship that we've now just got for you and it's our cheapest smaller jack of all trade ship so that you can try everything it... that you want but Get into the next point on that one for me is, 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 is does it do the jack of all trades? Is it going to be a jack of all but master of none and shit at none? Well, yeah, they did oh, say that, but that's yeah. Because twelve U E twelve S C U storage space isn't enough to rec like restock much. All um, I all I know um, is that when I get, I I eventually uh, start convincing friends to try Star Citizen again, and they're going to pledge, yeah. and they're going to drop $40 on the game, all I'm going to be telling them is, for $40, you get a fucking shuttle. 
<laughs> it's making the starter ships <laughs> looking worse and worse each time, isn't it? It's like, do you know we said it can carry cargo, now it can't. Do you know we said it can do combo, well now we're actually going to just give it a mining laser, but the mining laser is going to be so slow that you'll probably not be able to actually mine with it. You could probably make a little scratch on the rock or something. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can blow chunks off the rock, but you're going to have to EVA out and collect Grab each them. rock individually. Put them back. You know, tie, then, tie them to one another, a bit like butt beads, right? And then just drag them back into the ship. Well, and once you've got like one rock back in your ship, it's full. So if you want to mine more, yeah. what you have to do is take a friend along, blow the second piece off, and he can hold on to it yeah. while using that new mechanic oh. that's, that you know, sticks you to the side of the ship and he can hold on. You know what we it. need? We need butterfly nets in space. For collecting like, rocks. You can stand in the back of your thing, just like catching the little bits of rock coming up. Oh, a bit like the Expanse, because they actually drag nets full of ore, don't they? Yeah. Yes, that was. I liked that in the Expanse. That's pretty amazing. cool. Yeah, I like that as well. That makes sense, though, right? Yeah, it does. Like, it just make it just makes sense. Yes like, and no. I mean, if, if modern technology, you would imagine that there would be some form of tractor beam that would hold it or put it in a container would make more <laughs> sense than just dragging a net full of rocks but we always, we something always very... assume that we always assume that we would have figured out how to do tractor beams they might not necessarily have figured out the science may not so we do <laughs> well, unless they're not going to work <laughs> Can you imagine trying to stop the ship though? You have to kind of like swing, swing your ship around. You stop and you just like get this if you're using a rope, of like yeah, like that where you, you just see it go bag past of rocks you. Your back and then they push you forward, and you just get that motion that just keeps knocking your ship forward. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the few makes a good point. Why would you just uh, why use energy from a tractor beam when you could just use ropes? Because it's common sense. the ropes snap, or the uh, you know the rocks start That's rubbing against point. each other. And High just tensile, tensile steel should be fine. But I, I can just I'm just now that we're talking about like towing like ore and bags and stuff. I'm just thinking like for salvage. Now I'm just thinking of the reclaimer because the reclaimer basically has a massive dick underneath it. So if you then have two bags, sags at the back of it, <laughs> they literally, literally have a penis and balls of a bit Welcome of a to the space. Smut channel, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can just see it now. Two it's bags of war and still claiming. It's really, so this nice. game is slowly turning into uh, just like a game of all about <laughs> Dr. Evil. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why my mind went there, but it went there. Um, uh, it's one of those crazy places it goes. Uh, so yeah, but um, the Vulcan though. But what else? I mean, what else? So what's it do then? Just remind me. So right, it does. So it's refueling. I mean, so, so the other point of it being multi-crew. Sorry, I, I, I was like I was saying. So I was kind of against it because yeah. they said it's not what they wanted. It's not multi-crew. Sorry, multi-task. But then on the same breath, are they trying to say that being a refueling ship will be boring as fuck? So why would you want that as your only profession in a ship? It's just you know you're going to go up to someone and go there's your fuel and then fly off. So you know are they adding these other mechanics to um, into one ship to make it a little bit more interesting? Um, obviously, like the big star ferry, that's that part of that is actually gathering the fuel and selling it. So it's kind of more of a trading thing. But the actual mechanic of refueling someone's a bit. Yeah, it's got the cargo hold, hasn't it? The Starfarer, and it's got a bit more uses than. Well, it's just, big. This, just the point of this thing is, it's meant to be a smaller, um, cheaper ship than the big one, so that you can try the professions first before investing in the the, the heavy duty versions of them. Yeah, yeah. But like um, you said, I I mean, the other issue we've got is like we've seen, and I'll just put on the thing of, <coughs> of how it works is these drones, um, and. They said that these drones are going to work in the same way that Cryastro does. Well, at the moment, Cryastro, you land and it just automatically repairs you. It flies around you and it just goes zap, zap, and then you're repaired. So is is that first iteration of what they plan, or is this how they actually I think so. plan for it to work? I think once they actually have like the components in ships working correctly and wiring and stuff like that, I think the drones will specifically look for specific wires to repair and then they'll repair the wires. Once they've repaired the wires, they'll repair the hull. Uh, then they'll probably move on to the next patch that needs but, repairing. But if they're going to do that all automatically, why would you get a crucible and then go and fly around with your little handful and repair Yeah, it but manually? bearing in mind that that involves you having to be nearby a repair station. If you're broken down somewhere, you're going to need somebody to come to you. 
Whoa. And I, I don't know if you've ever heard of the fuel rats in Elite Dangerous, but because like uh, gameplay is a little bit lacking with Elite Dangerous, one of the most impressive um, uh, piece of emergent gameplay that has happened with that is the fuel rats. And the whole point of the fuel rats, it's just uh, an organization and all they do is rescue people who are stranded in space and it's fucking awesome and out of that they have their own uh defense force because there are people who hunt fuel rats so you as a fuel rat if you're a refueler um you essentially have a wing to protect you as well and it's just fucking is awesome. that ai or is that real no it's real all real people it's really really cool um, go on YouTube and just search for Fuel Rats, and there's some amazing g gameplay that have c has cool. come out of that. Um, but, you know, yeah, if you're stranded in space, you're going to need something like a Vulcan to come and rescue you. Okay. But then the, the, the Crucible yeah. and the bigger ships can also come and rescue you as well. It's not but bearing in mind, it costs money to run these ships. So if you're smaller in if, if you're in a smaller ship, are you going to have the money that it costs to pay a big crew, well, when I say big crew, like a crew of eight or whatever it takes for a crucible, um, and pay for their fuel and then pay for their expenses and then does pay this, their, their well, salaries then, on top of that. On the flip side of that, then, does this small ship make those ones irrelevant? Why, why um, have a big one which costs probably not a lot more because to run? Probably not, because the opposite argument more. then is can a Vulcan repair a javelin quick enough? Probably not. Well, no, I don't think a crucible could have it. No, I don't think but it can repair it quicker it. than a fucking Vulcan. <laughs> I can well, always no, guarantee you that. I thought the crucible was all about you. I mean, they may well change that. Don't forget now that uh, with these new idees and mechanics. But at the moment, the crucible is meant to be you get the ship docking like in the back of it, and then no, I you no, 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 no. To... There is a garage module that can go in the back of the crucible, but there's two crane arms. So um, the idea is um, originally they were supposed uh, to okay. multiple crucibles could scaffold together oh. but the idea is you can reverse up to a ship and these two arms can like pincers do the, the drones are gonna do, do the repairs yeah, yeah. 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 but i'll wait until i see it but i still yeah, feel so... like we're going less away from the manual side <laughs> of things and more into the automatic so yes these drones are, might go and find out where the wires are damaged and shit but they're still doing it all i, I mean are you going to control and fly them there and then repair it or is it going to do that automatically to to respond to Kraken, um, Kraken says indeed the Vulcan will be able to help smaller medium ships out more than that. I would actually disagree. I would say a Vulcan and well Vulcans and Crucibles working together will probably be the better tactic because I can almost guarantee you that the Vulcan will be get, get able to get to places to repair parts that the Crucible just can't get to. You know. Well, you've so. also got the, the jump gates and the size of the jump gates that the exactly size ships can get through. Yeah, a lot of people um, forget that. The difficulty you get with the, the, size... cruiser, the sorry the um, Vulcan is that because you've only got these two drones, how much material are they going to have in them to repair? Yeah, and that that's might be a good sticking point, actually. point. They might be able to do minor repairs, but there. I mean, I presume that the, the way they show the dome shapes, there's meant to be an element of how much it's got in stock. It can go and repair to a certain See, I can, degree. And then... I can imagine, say you're on an, in an Idris, right? And you've managed to escape but your reactor's gone offline and you're drifting, well, not drifting, but you're stuck in space and you're being hunted. The way I can see it playing out is that your organization, they send out a fleet of, uh, you know, security as well as a couple of crucibles and um, some Vulcans. I would imagine the Vulcans arriving first and being able to get the Idris back to a point where it could probably move but the armor is still shot, you know, there's still holes, yeah. and the weapons are still offline and stuff like that, you know, and then the crucibles arrive and there we go. But um, yeah, I, I think I think what they want to see are ships complementing each well, other, they... even ships of the same sort of role. Uh, the, the, in terms of what we're talking about then, but just how much it repairs, um, <coughs> I remember actually now from ATV, they said that Basically, the, the the Vulcan is going to be um, what we have in the UK as the AA van, or you know, yeah, I think the American AAA van or something. So basically, mm -hmm. it's not there to repair your ship; it's there to get you back on the road. So if your ship's disabled or it can't move, like you just said, it won't be there to repair your full ship or anything else. It'll be there to get you started, so that you can then travel somewhere and get repaired. And I think it'll be the same with the refueling; it won't be there to 
fuel your tanks straight back up. It'll be there to get you enough fuel <coughs> to get to a to a station that will be able to refuel you properly. Question: How much will you be able to repair manually? Do you think with the manual tool of your ship will be a matter? You can repair it all, but it's just a matter of time. It's well, I would imagine it's a bit like your house, really. Um, or say you live in an apartment where it's mostly, you know, made out of steel and you've got steel struts, blah, 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 blah. You know, you can obviously yeah. get to the stuff on this side of the steel struts, but trying to get to the stuff on the other side of the steel struts without some heavy machinery is a bit more of a, a problem. So, yeah, I think we'll be able to get to certain aspects of the ship. But Okay. I'm just yeah. thinking, like, I mean, I can, I can, I'm can. i just thinking, if you can manually repair, we'll be able to manually repair most of your ship, you'll be able to get at least your ship going, but what you will need the Vulcan for is obviously the refueling. Well, I, I agree. actually, I would say we could probably repair quite a lot, but whether you'd have the materials on the ship to actually do the repairs is a completely different matter because okay, your sure. repair tool will essentially be able to like repair wires, uh, I would imagine, and be able to weld yeah. and stuff like that. But I doubt very much you would think yourself, yeah, I'm going to fill my hold, my limited hold just with repair materials you know um yeah i'm just thinking i'm just thinking of scenarios when i'm going to need the vulcan in terms of to repair me and my predominant mindset of thinking is this is like obviously if i'm interdicted and interdiction works well you get attacked by pirates and you manage to just escape you've taken some damage the other one will be predominantly in big fights in fights where you've mm -hmm. got two orcs fighting against another orc or whatever or you've got two groups of people engaging for a reasonable amount of time um, that you will need them then to keep you going in a fight or whatever, you know, or after a fight, they come and repair you after you've won or whatever, you know? That's kind and of. I, I nice. genuinely think that the Vulcan will actually be quite helpful in combat scenarios. Like a Crucible, I would imagine, would just get torn up very quickly in combat. But you could duck in with a Vulcan and chuck some drones on somebody, I would imagine, and just like throwing it out there and then duck Possible. back I mean, the again. problem is, I mean, will be the balance on how quick they can repair. And like I said, if they're meant to be more roadside assistance, they're not going to repair you very much, maybe to get out of the fight. But here's the a thing. That. A long time ago, they discussed the repair mechanic on ATV. We're talking years ago now. But what I can remember of it, they were trying to discuss the crane arms. And it comes down to what materials you have. And I'm talking about speed now what materials are you using because there will be different grades True, yeah. um, and then on top of that your own individual skills so if you're trying to weld a line if you're shit at welding it's going to take fucking ages <laughs> you know so well, i mean it was just i was just thinking about it because <coughs> there's obviously three levels of repair that we know of obviously there's going to be the tier zero kind of manual one which we're going to get first and then we'll get the the next the next that's what i think I, so. I don't know it, it to me it sounds like we're going a little bit although you can go out there with a little hand tool and repair something it sounds like we're getting a little bit they're designing it and going away from that idea because i think I th everything I think... like that it's gonna take you longer isn't it again the hand tool will have its place you know if you're a, one of like five en engineers working on an address and you guys are taking damage yeah you're gonna want to run around repairing all those wires because that's the thing that will probably yeah, give be... you the edge over the other ship. But no, you're not going to be able to repair the hull on the outside. Yeah, you know, it, but it will give you an edge. Sort of fixing ships. Okay, but be... I'm going to count it. I'm going to count it slightly because they were talking about on reverse the verse, and they were talking about how they, how you know how at the moment when you take damage, the, mm -hmm. the skin of the ship kind of goes away. Yeah. And they were saying how the repair tool will kind of like in theory. There, I mean, this is what they were talking about bringing it back again, repairing the skin, mm. the, like the skin layers. So kind of like that. What, the handheld easy. tool? I think so, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I mean, I have to watch back I 100%. But, but, but I think uh, again, at that. the same point, is your little the hand tool going to have enough material I know, but that's, to that's redo exactly the whole the, of the ship? You know? Exactly. You, might, you might be able to do enough to <laughs> make yourself, you know, to get yourself back on the road mm. as it were you know we're talking about like roadside assistance and being able to get yourself back on the road it's, uh, it's one of those things where can you imagine okay so you're up you're, you're you're the captain on the bridge and you have breaches in deck x and y and z but the real critical deck is z so you're you have to tell your engineers right we have enough materials to do just a one deck so you have to prioritize z that's where really the gameplay that i think everyone's really looking for in star citizen really shines because 
I hope so. I mean, I, I mean, I'm just thinking like, and I look at the scenarios of when I'm going to have multiple decks being damaged. Is that going to be a solar flare? You know, natural disaster scenario. Is it going to be mis landing? We know no mis landings are dodgy. Or is it going to be, you know, because I'm just thinking realistically, if you're just exploring or whatever else, just flying around, you're at the moment bar crashing an interdiction. You're not going to get damaged other than run out of fuel. So you need it to refuel you. At the Do moment, you, know I mean? you don't get damaged, but there may at, be other ways that moment. you're going to get damaged eventually. Because I think that's it. You can't have just just combat. Because half the time, people will. I mean, that's what they talked about. We talked a bit about last week, wasn't it? How then the plan is not to destroy everybody; is to disable ships rather than actually destroy people. But that, I imagine there's going to be like obviously running out of fuel is something that people like me would do because I don't look at my fuel gauge. So you definitely need um, something to come and give me some fuel just to get me back to a station. Um, I wonder if just wear and tear, so if you're not looking after your, your components properly and your components break down uh, mid, mid-mission, mid then you might have to send Thanks. out for a Vulcan or something like that to come and repair. Do you know what I, you know know what I really hope for? Like I hope that we can be able to eject fuel into space. So, you know, when I'm on my friend's Connie, I can just eject in space and then jump into the into the little P-72 in the back and be like, see you later, sucker. Eject all just punch out on the holes. He's draining out the bottom as he's flying away. Toodaloo. So British. Toodaloo, fella. I mean, like, I, okay, this, then they, here's my, here's my funny thing is, is this, the guy that's been building the ships to blow up has been doing all this wonderful job of making things I love that guy. And then now they're going to be going, well, we, don't we actually don't up. want the sh it, ships to blow up anymore. <laughs> He's like, I made them look beautiful blowing up. He's like, no, no, we're going to now, we don't want really. So we're going to make really hard to The make thing I really like about that guy is he's so passionate about it and he's just like i like I things exploding yes yes i don't blame him he's like i'm not gonna get this too much but you were talking about like you're saying about things needing to be repaired and maintained on ship so say for example you weren't maintaining your reactor core or whatever and it explodes that could be an opportunity for like actual real physical rips the side of the hull out and then you can't repair it. You know what I mean? You can't repair that with the tool because it's exploded. You haven't looked after it. It's gone critical and it's blown up in your ship. Like if you're mining, for example, on the prospector and you guys not done the balancing right as he's mining and then boom, we've had a critical chain mm. reaction. Something's exploded and you're m left with a massive hole in the side of your um, prospector. Gaping and hole. Fuel. Yeah. Mm. And you're like, well, okay, now then for me, I'm like thinking of reasons why I need the Vulcan. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of reasons why you'd need a quick you know speedy ship to get to you to try and save your ass and that could be the one for sure that's where it's like yeah because this is there yeah, you see the ships the way that the skin's been eroded yeah on the outside on the on the video if you have just small too. patches of that then yeah you'd be something that you could come and just patch that section up especially if it's like a whole breach and so you're getting atmospheric problems within the actual ship so it could repair those little gaps and get you going again i suppose yeah yeah but um no, it's it's. It, I I mean, I love the colorway. Um, like kind of you know, racing British racing green with white is always fantastic. So, um, I I love the styling of the color. Um, Go on to the colors. Uh, the the, ref, the refueling thing. I'll have to wait and see because we still haven't got refueling working at the moment. I'm guessing that you said the magical drones is the answer. I guess that will be the way that they're going to make this stuff work. I feel that perhaps maybe they've come to a conclusion that they just can't get it to work and they need to get Squadron Forty Two done. So best solution is the drones to refuel you and do everything well, that's what i'm you. wondering if it's that's it it's like like there's all there's always like how they want to do it and then whether that's actually feasible uh, or even fun like you know because they, they have done they will go back on things it's like saying we can repair with a little handgun but if it turns out that that's not fun and it will take you forever just to repair a little patch like that then they might say that this just it just doesn't work now obviously we've seen an element of the world in tour where they've used it in the opposite thing to destroy and make holes in things so you, i think we'll get it to a certain degree but maybe it will become less of a repair mechanic other than like we said i reckon inside or running around and fixing components or pieces from inside the ship mode rather than necessarily outside the ship in terms of like using the hand tool for repairing this is what i've got in my head right screwdriver mm. think of <laughs> think of the first new star trek right Doctor think who. think of the opening moment where they're under attack right and there's just explosions going off everywhere in my head that 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 person trying to repair with that 
hand tool is like some red shirt in a corridor just whistling sweeping a brush <laughs> that's what it kind of reminds me of just waiting here to get shot <laughs> yeah and that's why the vulcan is helpful the vulcan everybody good for plugging holes <laughs> yes and filling your ship with yeah. shit so and, uh, um yeah, one yeah, thing i, I mean... wanted to touch on with the colors because you just mentioned that briefly um so they've said that it's coming up with the three different um, liveries. Mm. So they've got the blue and white, the red and white, and the green, is it? The three different ones? Yeah, they've got the green and the white, the white and red. We're going through now, and then we've got the blue, um, the blue-white. So uh, green, what white, I don't get with white. this is, why are they spending so much time on making these when I thought we were supposed to have a lot more of you making your own custom colours? Do you think they're going away from because that Because right now, I don't... It, because if you remember, they showed us their tech for making these skins and i think it can be done quite quickly and right now it's just a marketing thing <laughs> that's all well, that's it what is, i mean like what's I the you know is there any point are, are they i just wondered if because no, we're getting a lot I don't think where things because there's things like the dragonfly that has come with the exclusive yellow yeah. jacket like if if that's exclusive you can make then what's to stop someone coming yeah. and just making a yellow jacket yeah they can the and, and they said that at the time yeah. Yeah. for the yellow jacket you can make it yourself but so it's not i exclusive. think I, mo I would probably say like 80 percent of the star citizen community aren't savvy enough to realize that <laughs> <laughs> that's what. So, so that's why I was wondering. I don't know. More and more, we see these because, uh, like, you've got the <laughs> um, the the new uh, what is it? The sabers with the different. I know they've got slightly different loadouts, but they've also got different um, colors and layouts on that as well. And it's just like, well, are we going away from this idea of being able to make your own colors, or is it just no. yeah, like you said, a marketing thing? That, I don't know. It just seems a little bit odd. I really genuinely look forward to seeing a world full of pink ships. Well, we're probably going to get it. We're going to be star kitten shit. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's the least of my concerns. It's just nice to see colours, really. That's all. I was just nice to see the colours. But I don't really. I'm never going to buy this ship. It's going to be earned in game. So, I'm like, you know, it's it's cool. But I'm not melting anything. I'm not interested in it. In by spending two hundred dollars or whatever it is for the ship. I mean, no matter how long they leave it on sale, it's not going to tempt me to buy it. So. So in any, in any that's the question, form. do you think it's worth that? I think there are no ships pretty much in this game pretty much are worth anything other than the fifty bucks, to be honest. Um, you know, I have been having a long conversation with my wife about Yeah, this. I would oh gosh, I'd never spend more than uh, forty dollars on this game. Goodness. Never. No. I'm not an imbecile. Nearly concierge. <clears throat> but no, I mean, uh, I, I, mean I ordered no, I ordered my concierge no. card, everybody. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> For my little car. It's like nearly concierge, but it's like all he's bought is the forty dollar ship because it's the only one he thinks worth it. So he's just got hundreds of these little forty dollar ships to, to get to the concierge. <laughs> End of my life. Um, I mean, like, okay, this brings me, back, and I'm going to do this now. This is my. This is a little section. I want to cover this, this is, because this it is man. This is salt section. Just a teeny, just, oh God, just a sprinkle, just a, just a sprinkle, just a tiny sprinkle. Now, Miz will put the, if everyone's watched, is it on, was it on Reverse the Verse? Have you put it on there? Chris Roberts oh, is yeah, the, the sword. Yeah, no, I think, I thought that was okay. on eight. I don't know now. I was it, was, on okay, was it eight TV or Reverse the Verse? I thought it was Reverse the Verse or whatever. It was at the, oh, Call the Devs. Maybe it was Call the Devs. No, it wasn't Call the, the Devs. Anyway, so this, this, this little sprinkle was chris roberts um for this new game kingdoms come whatever deliverance he received this sword the audio might be on i've this. seen I a few know. people um, showing it i don't think it is yeah okay so he gets the sword and now this is a fully forged sword for that was given to early backers there was 50 early backers for 600 dollars. you got an exclusive like pack or whatever and you got a fucking sword made for you okay for six hundred dollars, all right. How for how much money for Star Citizen? What do you get for for you? I think you get a, a piece for of a, plastic. No, for a thousand pounds, you can then... pay for a piece of plastic. Oh, that's right. You you look pay. Look at that his face. For, look at that at the end. Can I just for say a piece yeah. of plastic? So he paid six hundred dollars for this, right? So that's like I paid. And look at that smile. I bought, I smile, bought right? two ships so he could have that fucking sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, no. I mean, I don't, I don't know. He might pay for it for his own money, or whatever else. It doesn't I'm matter. Sure but my point, my point is, is that smile, that smile on his face, is that of a kid in a candy store because he's been yeah. rewarded something amazing. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Now I'm sorry, but we spend for people who spend over a thousand, and we're not even saying a thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars or whatever it is. Okay, so it's nine hundred dollars that, right? Twenty thousand dollars, you get a gold spacesuit, maybe your name on something, a gold spaceship, exclusive paint job, and by the way, which <laughs> you'll be able to get the ship in game eventually for free, and you could probably color it gold eventually for free as well. I... Um, so and a little you get a little plastic card to go. What I'm saying is, is I don't feel that they reward, in my opinion, the people that have invested enough with the coolest. They should be doing 3D printed fucking spaceships, and you should be like 50 of them for the exclusive first. What 10, we have to remember. Right, calm your tits, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Not rewarded enough! Oh, I want rewards! Give me the moolah! <laughs> give, him, give him real guns! Free to bring <laughs> we, we want real like, guns. Uh, we want real fucking wild spaceships. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know that I criticise SIG as much as I praise them. But, um, what I will say is it's still early days. Once the game comes out, they're, they're planning for 10 plus years. You know, and I really expect and I really hope that they will continue rewarding us for years to come, considering how much some of us are backed for this game. And what you have to remember as well is when it comes to value, you know, $10,000 to most people is a lot of money. $10,000 to other people is not a lot of money, you know, so... But that does that's irrelevant in terms of giving you a reward for like this 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 sword I'm, I'm, wasn't an afterthought. This was a promised no, reward. No, tier. but my point from my, my point is my point yeah, is what would what would you rather them do, right? Would you rather, rather them ship. right now, would you rather them take away resources from developing the game yes. to developing stuff just for me? Yes. Us? Absolutely. 100%. No, I I would <laughs> rather them. <laughs> I, I would they rather them. Little Connie ship, so they, someone's made that. I would rather I, them get you. the. I would rather them get the fucking game out and then reward us <laughs> once the game is. But out. they're not saying they're going to reward you though. That's what I'm saying. No, like the, the Kingdom I, Come didn't no. make the swords until the game was out. It was no. just a promised reward. Like you, there's yeah. no such reward, pr even promised. Yeah, promised. Do you know how much it probably happen? cost them to make that sword I'm, though? What? But they don't have to make I, something I, I was just, It could be a, your, was, your ship that you so back happy. or something like that. He was so happy, and I was like, I'm. I mean, I get very excited you, when I see my digital spaceship. Don't get me wrong, but I would be a hell of a lot more happy. Like when you saw my face when I was holding that wooden model of the Hornet in my hand at Britain Con, I was like, damn, this is freaking cool. I want to take it home, you know, and have it on the wall right next to me. And I was just thinking the same thing. Like it would be kind of cool if. When the game goes live, live, and this is what we're talking about, when the game is finished, like you're talking about rewarding, it would be very, very cool if Star Citizen took, did something really special for the people that have dropped some bucks and did something mental special that didn't involve them having to pay the same price as the goods in posters and packaging to be delivered to them. And did just, you know what I mean? Because let's be honest. 30 quid just to like, buy a mouse mouse. <laughs> what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, what the hell? Um, you know, like really go to town, and I'm sure they will. But it would be because, think... like, something that's really opened my eyes, um, and it's something that I this week, my manager, or last week, rather, <laughs> my manager was ill, so I had the CEO of our company, which isn't a small company, sat in front of me for the last week, and we we do all of the curbside recycling uh, for um, residents across the whole of the city. And we provide plastic boxes, food caddies, food bags um, for all of this recycling. And all of these boxes come from China. And you would not... She... <laughs> We have these red sacks, right? They're, they're a bit like coal sacks for putting certain items into. And we've not had them in stock for about six months now. And you would not believe how fucking difficult it is to source them and how expensive it is to source them as well. And it's a fucking nightmare to get them manufactured. So, you know, it's so like... Easy. I, get your red sacks easy. It's not a problem. Cheers, mate. <laughs> not a problem. Just sit on a bike for a while. It's so easy to get rid of. I, 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 I don't disagree that it would be nice to have something 
Um, I think but... it's, it's more a case of, okay, so I take the extremists out of it. And I'm not talking about give everybody a sword or a ship. I mean, no. like a plastic no. model ship wouldn't be that hard, considering Warhammer makes models for like 10 to 15 quid and things like that. They're not that hard to make. Um, but put it this way, like, so you've got backers that have got a physical real sword from Kingdom Come, and yet concierge and now this was a big complaint from people because they've spent a thousand pound on the game they have to then buy their own card to get sent to them to say that they're concierge and on top of that they then limited it because they didn't want too many people showing up to an event like if you just spent a thousand pounds for a thing and then you I, can't get the card that you mm, spent for a spend i mean here's one my question though did that sword just randomly show up yeah what do you mean randomly show up it was sent to the people that yeah, back, so back he when he backed, he didn't know that he was getting the sword. No, you know you're getting it. Yes, it he says did. On it oh, part of the so there's, so there's the difference. We knew right, what we so... were getting when we backed Star Citizen. Yes. Was there a sword in there, gentlemen, on that list anywhere? I'm not asking for it. Well, actually, there's a lot of things in there that they haven't delivered yet, but that's different because, like you said, it's not out yet. But... Um... No, but the concierge is just a, a card that they've given to everybody gives access to a concierge event. Now, if you can't give that to everyone in concierge, then it's kind of a bit unfair to just sell a small, you know, what I mean? I don't disagree. A small amount of them. That's what I I'm don't saying. I disagree. I think Miss, Miss's point is, is why the fuck, you've already spent a load of money, why are you having to pay more? I completely agree. I think it's outrageous that they have to pay further money just to get a, a promise. And even if it come out of Chris Robert's own pocket it. just to get people... Like, to make one of those cards can't be expensive. Come on, we all make business cards. And uh, ooh, the, the metal ones? Because you do realise they're metal, right? Yeah. Know, they they on, are expensive. They are expensive. Expen However, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me explain, let me explain. Right. The metal ones, I do think, should be paid for because they will be expensive. But... They should give you the how option of a free plastic when card. Might, no, when you they make should loads never of how be paid expensive. for. No, Why not? they should never Why not? be paid for. We, again, go, I've got a free it's tin, this is metal. Free a tin from a, doctor's, uh, from a doctor's consultant right, meeting. So do, you go there, free tin. Right, do me a favour, go sorry. and price up how much it costs to get those cards done. Okay. They, I'm I think happy you'll with them be surprised. Too. The limited number, I mean, like, I, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I just... <laughs> the, here's my other thing on the, the thing it's just like if you look back on it Chris, star citizen was like one of the original kickstarter kind of computer games so when kickstarter was kind of like a thing it was kind of growing we forget you know it was they were part of that early stage so the reason why the prizes and all the rest of it probably weren't great on their kickstarter was because we were pretty new to it no one's really done it before uh to their level and they blew away and all the rest of it so it was quite new so i can understand the pledges being limited also they didn't expect to get 200 million they expected to get, you know, a couple million or whatever if they were lucky. So, um, sure, the prizes were limited, but I mean, you know, the campaign for Kingdom Come generated 1.3 million, I think it was, and they're giving away free swords. Now, Star Citizen is now nearly close to 200 million, and they can't give away free pieces of plastic or three pieces of metal. Um, I just. Again, I'm just, it comes down to just like, we knew what we were getting. I no, but the thing is, is like you can't complain if you signed up for not, something. You can't expect them to change. You can't ask them can, to change though. the terms. Nike, right? Nike. Here's an example. Okay, Nike. The girl that designed the Nike logo. Okay, the Nike swoosh. Okay, she got paid hundred and fifty dollars to design that logo. Nike came back many years later and gave her. Let's just say a very large number of shares worth in the Nike company worth into the millions as a reward to say thank so you very much. So here's the thing. Now, I would like Star Citizen to think of that kind of philosophy and to come back and say... And there you we go. Time. You have just brought it back to my, my point earlier, many years later. So once well, it's the game is out... It's yeah, I'm just putting it out there now. <laughs> so I want to get it in Chris Rose's head. Once, See his lovely little face. Once they right? have, once the game is out, they have more money coming in, so they have, they will have the freedom sure. to do shit like that. Wait and see. You know. Anyway, moving so. on. Moving on. We've been but, I, long. but anyway, uh, my point is that is I know what you're saying, and I get that we we all knew what we're pledging for, and I do get that, and I accept that, and I'm not because I'm not complaining for me. I'm nowhere near concierge. I'm not getting any of the shit anyway, so I'm not complaining for me. But I do know that there's lots of people that have put. It's when you give a reward. So say you've reached a thousand, that's fine. If if you were never expecting a reward and no one got one, that's fine. But then if you say, well, five of you pledged a thousand, but only two hundred of you can get this special reward for re pledging a thousand, it's like chucking it into a ring and say, go on and fight each other for it. I don't that's disagree with fair. that. That's not I fair. don't disagree with that. 
And that's what I'm kind of saying. That's not, you know, if you're going to give a but reward for the... someone for reaching a certain level, then give it to everybody that reached that level. Mm. But anyway. Okay, moving on. Moving on, because it, it was a fun thing. It was a fun <laughs> thing. It was quite interesting. <laughs> See, if people want to comment on that um, question, have we got any questions we could answer? Yeah, throw people? some questions at us, Thanks please. Thanks question yeah. in the chat if you want to ask any questions. We've got a couple. <coughs> Let's go on to a couple we're, of them. We're, we're doing something different this week. We're going to go through questions as we're going to just kind of flow through it. So you guys are all part of the conversation. So if you're in here, and you want to ask us? Go for it. Ask questions. Okay, so we've got one from um, from our patron, uh, Ward. Thank you very Ooh. much for becoming a patron, sir. We appreciate it. Thank so you. So his question is, um, let me have a look. Why are so many people hung up about the Carrick? It is the car uh, the, the, Why is it that it's taken a little longer? They basically put it on hold. And I think obviously what he's saying is people <sighs> are complaining about it. So why are people I'm complaining wanna... about it? I'm one of those people that's complaining about it, <laughs> and, it we'll and it will it will go. I will. Do you want me to start with my reason why I'm complaining about it? Well, okay, you you're one to complain about it. I'm just going to say I I don't really care, but I'm also at the point in, when we used to have Soul on the show, and he's talking about banning merchantmen. Um, in my opinion, some ways, if your ship's getting delayed, you should be pleased because the more they delay it, the better the fucking nail it turns out. Because, <laughs> but that's that's my opinion. But go on, go. You tell us why you're pissed off about it. I'm not pissed off. I'm just disappointed about it. And it comes back to the, if you were to look at the, uh, it comes, comes back to something else I've put in here, which is, I believe, to do with the ships, the list, the loanership list. Now, if you look at the loanership list, I kind of counted it out. I think it's 30, either 28 or 32 loaner, uh, 32 ships that have loaners for. So these are all ships that are kind of in development. And like, you know, if you bought them, you get other ships to think. And I was like, okay, so there's, shit ton of ships that haven't been finished and the Carrick is obviously one of them and I was kind of like, the Carrick is kind of one of those early ships, I believe, from a couple of years ago or whatever, and it's like it keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed and I'm kind of like, the way I look at it is, is, is very, tried to be philosophical about it, but I am annoyed about it is one is that obviously everything that's a priority is Squadron 42 based, it's the fact yeah, Carrick is clearly being delayed because it's obviously not that important to Squadron Forty Two. It's because they're too busy off exploring, aren't they? <laughs> exactly. Well, well, this is it. Exactly. It it can't be that important. If it was important to um, Squadron Forty Two, it would be like the Idris and all the rest of it, probably pretty much yeah. nearly finished by now, and it would be finished by now. So there must be a reason why it's delayed. Same with the Bandu and all the rest of it. They're just not important. To Squadron Forty Two. They have. They've said that already. That although they're chucking out the designs yeah. and stuff, it's Squadron Forty Two is to focus in that respect because if they get them polished they can bring them over to the to the universe but it's just i mean realistically just... it's because there's also lots of mechanics that are still not in the game and like you said like, even with these just these drones that until they know what it's the scary. mechanic is it's hard to stick that into a ship yeah that's the because reason you, that they really delayed the cutlass blue and red as well because at the end of the day let's take the constellation for example how much time did they waste because they had to re how many times did they remodel it twice you know that's yeah exactly. they want to try and get it right first time yeah, and they have they to wait get for away the mechanics to do to, that yeah they want to get away from keep remodeling everything like they've had to they're remodeling the aurora because it doesn't fit properly they're remodeling the mustang because it doesn't really work properly so it's i think they want to instead of rushing out and saying there you go you all wanted your carrick here it is you all wanted your banding merchant here it is and then later going well shit now we want it to do this and they, there's no room for the scanners in there right we're going to have to take the cockpit out redesign that put it back in it's it's not worth it they want to get i think they're going to we're going to start seeing a like you said squadron 42 stuff they need that actually working to release the game. So we're going to see them developed much more fully and complete. Yeah. Um, Until... And then you're going to get mechanics before I think you're going to get some of these other ships. Because there's no point putting them in. It's a freelancer variant. People keep saying, Can I, where's my freelancer variant? But there's no point putting the cargo one in until they've worked out the balance and how big they actually want to make it. Um, and the same with the, the missile boat and things like that. It's got to, it's just, I, in my opinion though, it's the longer it's delayed, the better it is for you. I, I agree. And until that, like that golf swing mechanic is implemented 100%, we're not going to see the Carrick. <laughs> my, I think my my frustration and the reason why I'm just annoyed about it is is that if you can't, like, surely 
you could just be pretty like i mean like they're not very honest we're doing a lot of this is like we're kind of picking on what they're saying and doing the kind of like the the, the bit that they should really be kind of telling us really like we're going taking bit snippets of where they said certain things and kind of putting them together to say squad 42 is the focus the character is great we'll kind of work on it as and when but it's actually this is kind of like not really working and these are the you know we're doing that for them and i'd rather like they just don't make ships I just wish I just wish they hadn't said they even released it. It's like the Carrick is a ship that's going to be used and then in the, the MMO universe, we'll get to it when the MMO universe is something that's a priority. At the moment, Squadron 42 is a priority and everything that we've been making is just for that. And we we're just going to make ships for that and sell ships just for that. And the MMO universe will come later. I, th I think I the problem why... has always been, and it's a problem that's uh, that affects a lot of things, is they just didn't know. They didn't know. Well, they, what, they didn't know that the, the Squadron 42 was the, the single-player well, they... focus-driven... They didn't. They knew that. They knew that from the beginning. But, they built a studio. No, 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 no. I, I know that. But, <laughs> they, you know, how did they not know that they wouldn't have a Carrick feature in the game? Like, they, they might have changed I mean, is, their minds at some point, you know, because they change where, their minds all yeah. the time on stuff. Well, no, yeah, there you was know. an element that some ships were going to be in Squadron 42 and then they decided not to use it. And I think there was another yeah, one that okay. wasn't going to be in Squadron 42 and they said, well, this is actually why we've made it because we've now decided to put that into Squadron 42. So I suppose there might be an element of that. It's the same way as you was not going to get planet side on Squadron 42 and now we are. So again, yeah. the scope's changed. Um, yeah. But I get what you're are saying. It's ships? difficult, it, it's difficult think... to think, why, why even <coughs> put it on the roadmap? And then go no, actually we're nowhere like half the stuff yeah. that has when we haven't got the mechanics for it, there's, there's, I can't see why any yeah. of it's been on the roadmap. But it's almost like just to, I feel sometimes I think it's just to shut us up sometimes, like just to say, oh look, there's the you know, could people be asking for months and we're like, well the current blah, blah. oh look there yeah. it is, it sprung up on the roadmap for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then they just take it away again. We're still working on it's it. Like, it's like, it's like, what you know? And I don't know. I just. I don't know. It, it concerns me because it, it's, it's like I worry. It's like a lot of chopping and changing, and then I kind of go, "Is this is this going to mean the ship? Like you're saying, mean going to be better? Is it going to be better, or is it going to be?" It more is in white box, in though, isn't it? You know what I mean? That kind of worries. But I, don't, I, I trust them. They make great ships. I'm not too worried about the Carrick in terms of it being a great ship. I'm just, I wish they would be a bit more clearer in terms of like just if they're making ships, just make them all for Squadron 42, and that's fine. And the and the, 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 the Carrick is in white box, though. I'm not losing my mind, right? It's, uh, I believe it's in. I'm sure they mentioned it was in. Gray, white it's in grey box, box, isn't it? Oh, it's in grey box. I thought it was in white box. Well, that's so or it might change. be back again. They decide that they need to change it and redo it. it so I don't know what the state they, might it they put it they to might one side, haven't they? So. Yeah, and um, then also the other thing is, is that they've changed the way they make ships is now as well. So before they would make the outside and then the inside. Now they make the inside, and which then makes the outside, sense. Which is a smart. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Which is really is a smart way to do it, but um, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll see, we'll see. But I am to answer this nice question. It's a good question. Um, I'm not as salty. Some people I'm just salty because the time and because it was so promised such a long time ago. It's like like a lot of ships. It's a long time to wait for it. The it's thing is, though, it's yeah. I mean, the the promise of some of the ships, like especially with, like the alien ones as well, is it, they haven't even fleshed them out. It's to even to even imagine that you're going to get one of those ships coming soon, it's not going to happen because they they haven't yeah. done the technology for it. They haven't even designed the aliens properly. So it's like yeah. It's, it's they always tease it's, us though. They always tease us. Like, how long was do. it before you saw the the Banu Defender in three D and like on like in like the a three D model and things like that? And you go. <gasps> The whole that development so cool. is full of being teased. It's, it's like, just it's, going to be around the corner. Yeah, it's what most yeah. of it it's is. Like, it's just a big yeah, tease yeah. thing. It's just a big... It's all a big dick tease. I was about it's... to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a massive... <laughs> um, so, I don't know about you guys, <coughs> but have you noticed any FPS? This is my thing. Have you had any FPS improvements? No. Since... I've heard a lot of people say the that the, the, the new oh. hotfix has helped stability in frames a lot more i haven't experienced it myself yet i okay today. haven't had a chance okay to test it today i played it for a while i only had that one issue at the beginning the frames were about round about where they were before but i wasn't getting quite as many pops you know like the lag pop but yeah. it could be the fact that there's not as many people playing the game possibly as well that's the other thing it's hard to tell i need to really test it for a week to be able to be able to see but i was at lagsky 
and I was getting 20, between 20 and 30 FPS at lag yeah. ski walking around. An argument that I bad. keep seeing people putting forward is there's less people playing the game at the moment. Yeah. That's why the FPS is better. It doesn't work like that because they spool up the servers as and when they're needed, so they fill up. <laughs> So if the FPS is better, it's because they have done something. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping for me that the FPS has improved a little bit. Um, but then again, my stream machine should probably be ready this week. So um, then I'll be back to yeah. decent FPS again. So that'll be nice. Oh, actually, you know what will be interesting? Uh, do us a do a thing. Make a note of your frames before you do it. Oh, I, I lost, I lost about fifteen frames. Yeah, so, so I thought about the same. OBS. I was about the same. Ten. 10 to 15 frames, I would I, say. I mean, I've seen... The thing is, I've seen on Facebook in the Star Citizen UK book page that people are <coughs> posting pictures of their FPS like since patch 2.6. Oh, look at... And it's like you take the snapshot just as it reaches 60 frames and then, yeah, it, yeah. the whole hour <laughs> wasn't 60 frames. And then you might no. be, like you said, you might be lucky and log on one day and it's 60, the next day it's 30, but the next 10 minutes it's 15. I, it's like... I have a... <laughs> I have an i7 I have an i7 8700K and it seems like everybody who pretty much has this CPU are all reporting 40 fps plus. So okay, seven, I'm seven not I'm not saying everybody should go out and get i7 8700Ks. I'll just go um, burn my but, eyes and then but we just got lucky. Does. <laughs> just got lucky with the right one. The best, yeah. best Star Citizen CPU for perhaps 3.0 or 3.0. <laughs> until until 3.1 comes out and then the Ryzen will be better and then when 3.1 <laughs> comes out the i5 will be better. I, th <laughs> I think it comes. I think it comes down well, to single threaded. Sing I'm 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 really it supposed to be multi -threaded. Things. It's it, it's the speed, isn't it? It comes down to the speed at the moment, and this is very 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 well, fast. My run I run well, mine at 5.2 gigahertz. It I just log in. <laughs> so I see if it's playable. If it's playable, I play. If it's not, I go off. I don't look at my FPS. I don't look at because sometimes oh, like this, I go back madness to say, look at my FPS, and he's lagging like hell, and I've got like less frames and managing to move perfectly. So it's like, do you know what? Who gives a shit what That's the dial says up in the corner? I can either move or I can't fucking. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's true. This is true. Yeah, it's still breaking. It's still broken all the time. I can't get anywhere. Um, I think the way I look at it is this way when it comes to CPUs, okay? So AMD got a Mustang Omega and Intel got a £600 Obviously. Raven, Raven <laughs> so old, it? EMP, oh, my fucking Omega. Just saying... There and on top of that, that, AMD got it for a fucking was it graphics card, and then like Intel mm -hmm. got it for a heart, an SSD. For SSD. Ah, cards, but yeah. the best SSD on the market. Yes. <laughs> oh, hey. Can you send me one now, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did anybody buy uh, one yeah. out of interest? I was very tempted. I was hoping to get the free one, but no, I was too oh, far man. back in the queue. Oh. No. I, I will. Uh, Miz was, were you sat next to people who were all sat there opening, getting their golden yes. tickets? Like, yeah, hey, I got a golden ticket. And then someone next to them going, yeah, I got you just sat there yeah. going. Sit again. I'm going to go to sit sitcom this year and I hope out they give out actual oh. fucking spaceships. That'll make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> No, because they're not going to oh, spend man. resources on it because they can't give it to the people that have spent a thousand pounds. Fuck you, Sid. Give me my spaceship. <laughs> no. 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 Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. so, um... oh, brilliant stuff. Uh, next topic of conversation. Oh, um, HUD improvements. Do you want to? Or is there another question? We've got HUD improvements, questions, but they're all for Moist New. Oh. I don't know whether we leave them till the end or, or whether you want them. Oh, know, yes, guys, I've redone my hair. Yes, yeah, so that was pretty <laughs> much the first question. Have you. Uh, no, the first question was how many Smurfs lost their lives providing the dye for your hair? Many. Maybe. I just I just put them on my head. I'm like, oh, there, there. You can sit in my hair. Basically, basically, the Smurfs are standing naked on his head. And he has no hair. Yes. They're just naked. See, I, see, you see Smurfs, but I see trolls. Yeah. yeah. He's got little. Trolls, do you remember those kids? He's got to get off the end of the pencils. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> on the end of the pencils. Like uh, that. And he's just put the hair off of it on his head. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally what I'm thinking. Like if I can get my pen, I can just position my pen slightly. <laughs> <laughs> you might like, you might like, well. If you just do that on your microphone, it would kind of look like it. Before we get in serious <laughs> trouble here. Um, um, no, but the Hunt Improvement. Moist Noodle wants to know, is he, his, is, is he also a limp noodle? 
Rithius wants to know if moist noodle is also a limp noodle. Uh, only when I get in the. In, in the... I don't know. Yes. <laughs> in really cold water. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we'll ask the last question for now, and then people can add some more. Um, Cecil asks, oh, yeah. "What is your favourite ship in the game at the moment, and why?" Oh. What? As in, what's currently available at the moment? Yeah. So we'd go with Cutlass. Cut, cutlass. Oh, uh, well, actually, it's. Uh, I'm going to change it. I've been saying Cutlass Black for ages, but I've been loving my saber again. I love my saber again. I've been really enjoying shooting things, blowing things up, and the cockpit is fantastic in the saber. And it looks great. So before before yeah. I give you my answer, I'm going to defend my my mod and say, "Fuck you, Miz. Can't even sell it, say his name right. It's Cecil, not Cecil. Cecil. If it's Cecil, then spell it right. <laughs> That's spelled Cecil. Spell the name right and um, say it right. But I actually really enjoy the Gladius. Actually, C there's just something. Oh. Would be There's just something about the, the Gladius that I really uh, enjoy. I haven't done any combat in it, but I, I just like to fly around in it really because it's pretty. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I, I've had the Gladius, but um, the Gladius is just like a bit of a love-hate relationship at the moment with it. Um, I love the old one. The copy of the old one was better than the new one. Okay. Um, it's, be it's better, but the uh, I like the fact that they put the hard points on it. Big improvement. The overall ship at the moment just doesn't, the balance doesn't feel right. It's, it's all to do with okay. this ESP. In terms of the combat, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like the Sabre yeah, for yeah. me is, st is way better. Um, and the horn is pretty good as well from what I hear as well. Um, but the Gladys, it's just a bit too floaty. Um, my, but it is uh, nice. my, my favorite moments with that ship is just, you know, not being in it and being just sat on Daymar staring at it. Really. It is pretty. It, it is pretty. It is a pretty <laughs> ship. There's no question. It's pretty. Like I say, that one was favorite. The Aegis make pretty ships. So, yeah, the Aegis, uh, the Sabre and the Gladius are very pretty. Um, but yeah. In How terms of just ships, Sabre. I don't know. I mean, at the moment, I just don't. I don't. I honestly don't know. Um, because my favourite ship used to be the Freelancer, but then I kind of got rid of that at the moment for the Cutlass. Um, mm -hmm. And at the moment, I just when I go on, I'm normally joining up with other people, so I'm just on their ship. I've not done a lot of just single flying for anything. So I'm still salty that they got rid of the stairs in the in the landing gear. <laughs> I mean, I do like that. I mean, for me, like in terms of a, just a a ship that I love is the the um, the dragonfly. It's not. I don't. You don't really call it a ship, but I just love the the design and everything. It flies in it. space. The design of it, like ships, I love. It just looks good. It's like yeah. a motocross bike, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It, always, I can't... it reminds me of my old dragster that I used to ride with the nice chrome pipes and everything else i know it hasn't got anything but that's just, that's the feel i like, get from it all the time. and when you get on it you just go, yeah it makes here it comes miz everybody it's like, <laughs> and then no well, explosion all the sound effects <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. I, I, yeah the dragonfly is is dope i, I like that one um i hope they get it working I, the cutlass i love the cutlass but you know what it's for me the problem that i've been finding with the cutlass is it's just been starting to feel a little bit soulless that sort of makes sense. my problem with it is that everyone's flying it yeah, I think that's probably what it is. I think that's probably what it is. I think that it, yeah. it's soulless and everybody's flying it. Um, yeah. from, it's um, not unique. How about from like, I don't know if it'd be the same in your opinion, like look perspective, but I've seen a lot of pictures that like with madness joke saying that 3.0 is like basically screenshot simulator because everyone's taking really nice pictures. But for me, the freelancer, although I've gone away from it because of like the size and it not doesn't seem as practical as the cutlass. I'm still finding the screenshots of people with the, the freelancer still looking pretty awesome from different angles. But Something that I've noticed, though, is, yes, it's screenshot simulator, but I think m my favorite screenshot creator, I forget their name, um, but it's the person who does like close-ups of things. Um, they do extreme close-ups, and it's because it's things I've never noticed before. Um, but most of the screenshots I see on Reddit are all just exactly the same. What I really look forward to is when we have things like flora and fauna and everyday yes, people are taking screenshots of things that I've never fucking seen before. Yeah, um, I, I'm I can't wait for, for that. that sort of stuff on in the game, to be honest. And like bare moons are OK for a little while. But yeah. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. I want to see some pretty shit and fly through canyons that have got trees and, cause, you know, yeah. who doesn't want more things to hit? 
I, I can't even fly <laughs> over the the surface of a moon that's got nothing on it. So yeah, I, you know, I want stuff to stick out and the first smash my the shit. first time I ever hit electricity lines while flying a helicopter in armor blew my mind. Right, <laughs> and when that moment happens in Star Citizen, it will yeah. be awesome. <laughs> Just like the these <laughs> <laughs> for me today i i did my first ever kind of like i bought a load of clothes like civilian clothes when i was at lesky because the frames were good enough i just was walking around trying out the clothes going i tried the jacket on and i was like oh yeah cool and then i was like nah my ass looks a bit bigger this uh my wife she's spinning <laughs> drink all over my desk. All right, babe. do you want to try and break my computer with my drink don't take the piss out of a pregnant lady yeah leave her alone <laughs> She's allowed to spill a drink wherever she wants. She honestly, like every five seconds, she'd come up to me and be like, "Oh, watch out for this, watch out for that." She's literally like um, Josh Brolin in the Goonies. You know, don't slip, guys. Don't slip, guys. Don't slip, guys. And then whoop, slips. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally is that character. Um, you know, like don't trip over the glass, guys. Don't trip over the glass. The next thing you pick up, and then you, know, you just hear this smashing sound. She's broken the glass. Oh no! Um, I can't remember what I was thinking. Uh, what was I saying? Shall we talk about HUDs now? Because yes, we were going to talk about that like fifteen minutes ago. <laughs> no, it's fine. We've got any more questions, by the way, guys. Keep throwing the questions in, uh, if, and we'll just go through them as we go along as well. So we're going to try and keep it fluid and and keep it very kind of chatty today. Um, the HUD stuff. I was going to say on. We can either. We actually we could do HUDs, or we could talk about ships as we're talking about ships, and we've been talking about it all. It is a big topic really for the week. We have the Terrapin. We have the um, the what was the other one that they did the uh, the the new Phoenix interior? They showed us the yeah, white box for that. Really oh, cool. that's really interesting. We have, we have the also... Phoenix without the hot tub. No, oh, no, we yeah, are spending yeah. time in the hot tub together. We discussed know, this, Miz, and you promised. <laughs> they've redesigned that hot tub a few times because that's a good point. I've seen isn't... I've seen tweets with moist noodle and laptops watching shows in the bath, so I can imagine you spending yeah. a lot of time in the Phoenix hot tub. I always just hold my laptop just above the bubble. <laughs> it's like that one, it's just perched above the water. I have a strong yeah. arm. This arm. So you're gonna want in your in the hot tub. You're gonna want like the flip down screen so you can watch like yeah. the stuff from the Reliant news van being broadcast around. In all seriousness, I'm tempted to get a huge fucking TV put in my bathroom. <laughs> it might Just, be like, safer than holding the, the laptop to be fair. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what do you want to look at the the oh. Phoenix first? Because I've got a picture of that. Or do you want? <laughs> Sorry, um... I shouldn't laugh. I've pro I told my missus I'd throw away his t-shirt. <laughs> She's just washed it again. <laughs> sorry. Oh, she drives me crazy. Right, Don't you wash things Sharing before throwing them out? I do. Nah, I always keep them clean. <laughs> I always like to kind of keep them clean. Are you telling me you don't you don't give your old clothing to charity? <laughs> Would you uh, want something he's been no, wearing? You wouldn't, Let's be you fair. wouldn't want this t-shirt. Let's be honest. You wouldn't want this t-shirt. Um, oh, uh, Miss, do you want me to throw you the, um, the video link? I've got, got the video, video link, haven't you? In the sign, yeah. we've got it for the um, 600 <laughs> interior. This is the, the Phoenix interior bit, so you can talk about that. The bit. Phoenix one and the Hurricane. I mean, it's yeah, that's all that into one stream thing. But the like the Terrapin's a whole other thing, so we'll talk. We can't look at oh, this yeah. first. I mean, this oh, is the. I don't know if this is just deceptively bigger, but it looks much bigger than a normal constellation. I cannot wait. That bar, I just cannot wait to hit on Twinkie Barman. Oh, right. Mm. The, the, the bar is. Like, I, was, I got a Mass Effect. This feels like a Mass Effect ship to me. This feels like I'm but, on the the um, Normandy. This feels like. Yeah, well, yeah, this is kind of the ship I was on about when I said I wanted like a Winnie Bago type thing. This now is, seems to be turning more into it, but I don't understand how they're fitting in the the Connie. That it does. It seems too big in some. Yeah, I was about to say it, that it seems to have a lot more space than it I currently it feels from, like we yeah. have. I mean, where's the where is the hot tub going to be? Because that's like the bar area with the seating, and then I mean, that's it comes out of the floor, big... obviously. <laughs> I, I thought that was in a different section. Like they got shit ton of seats in there as well. It's what loads of seats. I so was looking at the bed in the back. Where's the is... bed in the cutlass currently? Oh, they're in the side could... section, aren't they? It's in the uh, the front, just behind this, but just behind the. Um, they the could cockpit. almost turn that into a passenger ship. Is it, it just me? Like it would make quite a good passenger like, ship. 
window where you can like nice panoramic view sort of thing of outside. Uh, I'm gonna have to buy a Genesis Starliner mm. now. No, but I'm gonna. I might I, have to get the Phoenix. I don't want it, but I'm I don't. <laughs> Here, here's my thing, with... okay? Here's, here's my thing with the Phoenix, right? The loanership for the Phoenix is an Andromeda, but the Phoenix is the most expensive of the constellations. Yeah. So why wouldn't you get an Aquila rather than a... Why would you just get the basic Andromeda? It makes no sense to me. Say that again. CIG. So, okay, so the Phoenix is the most expensive of yeah. the constellation. Yeah. It's because it's so, the pimp ship, isn't it? Why don't you, when your loanership, your loanership currently stands as the Andromeda, mm -hmm. so yeah. why wouldn't they make the next tier down, which would be the Aquila, the loanership? Is that because it's not in game? So then the Aquila's loanership is the Andromeda. Yeah. No, the Aquila is in game now. Sorry, I'm going confused in my uh, patches. No, the Aquila is in game now. So why not give them the Aquila rather than the um, Andromeda? It doesn't make sense to me. It seems like it's you're getting the cheaper. You should be getting the more expensive ship. I right. think it's that they just not updated it, so that's what you had when you first bought it. So they haven't changed it to the the new ship that's out. That I think. was so yeah, they probably yeah, have yeah. to that was, re go around it. Or whatever. That was my frustration. Is like that was my thing. Is is that it does seem to be like the loaner ships list just going very quickly does need to be updated really to match modern mm. day ships rather than some of the ships seem to be very archaic and old on that loaner list. The community has been asking for that for a long time and they make subtle changes every now and again, but they don't seem to do a drastic overhaul ever. And they could do with it, to be honest. They are so some of the names, some of the lists on that, there's a few on that list were shocking. But anyway, back to the... Um, the people said they were the made the ship wide, they were planning on making the Phoenix wider anyway, which I wasn't sure about, but I mean, there's rooms in there, there's, there's so much freaking room in there. There's got the bar. There's like a it room looks huge. In there. Then there's like a separate room. Yeah, I don't know. To me, that looks like a completely different ship. I mean, I know they've reworked a shit ton of it to make it because it's got none of the cargo room and stuff, I suppose. But <coughs> and there's Was the other it... ship that looks pretty tasty, the Hurricane. I'm yeah. excited about this ship. As as a turret, this would be a real test for the, those turrets. It is a sexy looking ship, to be fair. And the, um, the inside of the hammerhead as well. Looks amazing. Um, this is exactly what I want from the hammerhead. Can you imagine like having fights in there, like boarding party fights with the long corridors? It's going to be awesome. People I can't wait to rub myself all over that interior. <laughs> God. Oh, the turrets. My, I, I was like, that was cool. My voice noodle ship. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm naked go in, never go in with a black light. Never oh, uh, Miz, don't touch light. that handle or that handle. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson Pollock painting going into <coughs> into his ship. Uh, oh, um, the turret's cool though. The um, I like the animations on the the um, the turrets. That's pretty, I just wait yeah, to see it. Work. A lot of movement on that, isn't there? A lot of freedom. There's a shit ton of movement on that. And then we got Looks the new Mustang tasty. look. I'm curious how strong the box underneath is, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Oh, I, I, this was interesting though. I, I, I wasn't. Sh I'm not quite sure yet. It looks a bit of a dog. It looked a bit uh, weird. I don't know what you guys thought. Yeah. So when we saw the concept art, really loved the concept it, art. Now yeah. I've seen it in grey box. Is I'm not. Maybe it need. I I think it's just because we're not seeing it textured. Maybe. So we're not still, seeing depth very well. But still, I, mean, I don't know. I just... I think like, I we, like we were kind of talking about a bit earlier, though, with the, the price of the different ships and things, I think that the, the Mustang now, that and the Aurora are just becoming so irrelevant that it's almost like something you're going to fly for an hour until you make a couple of quid to do something, something better. <laughs> to get, you know, like, get your Penguin, because that's going to be the far better ship. Yeah. Starter ship is going to be the Penguin um, or the Avenger. But do you know the crazy thing? I think I mentioned it last week. When I was playing Elite, Dan uh, Elite Dangerous, uh, EVE Online, I spent so long working towards the high-end ships, and then I ended up spending, like, end game most of my time in Interceptors, which I could have gotten into within, like, my first few weeks of the game. <laughs> it's crazy. So, yeah, yeah. like, the point I'm making is I might actually end up spending more time in starters in the long term in Star Citizen than, like, my Hammerhead or my Reclaimer or whatever. 
So well, you 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 will do. I mean, because it's going to cost you too much money to keep all those big ships going at the beginning. Yeah, so exactly. You will, have to, you, you will have to start off yeah. in smaller ships. We all will, um, unless I mean, you drop I, thousands on I, UEC. Unless you like, I don't know. You play other games, but you don't always manage to get big groups and things. So I think flying these bigger ships are, are going to be less practical most of the time yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. I think I'd, there'd be like a balance. I think maybe like constellation size. I, I think those sort of small co-op type size ships that you can probably get away with AI crew are probably going to be like, the, not for everybody, for, for a majority of people would be the limit of the maximum kind of ship that you want to fly on a daily basis. And then the big ships will be for if you're planning them. Oh, that's my opinion. I mean, obviously some people go, no, I'm going to fly my big ship every day, which is fine. But I don't think it's always going to be that practical. Especially when it's a madness blowing up you've a been caterpillar. You've been clipped. You've been clipped, Noodle. <laughs> He's what? Sorry, big child. He's been clipped. <laughs> What's he done this time? <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> um, entry level might be better in long, uh, better term to start out with. Oh, for sure, absolutely, hundred um, percent. I think the sooner you get into the penguin or some of those kind of like, well, the cost of the game thing is, is I say the penguin, but then I'm like. The game is still so far from being done. We could have another two starter, three starter ships come along. That could be better. So, well, actually, now you're saying that, well, there's a, was a question on the form, which is um, the prisoner asked, which is interesting. So, um, mm -hmm. basically, obviously, they've now just announced the Vulcan with the the multi um, aspect ship. Um, what do you think um, another sort of small multi ship would be? What would you like to see in it? Oh, so like instead of those uh, repair, refuel, and uh, rearm. I suppose you got well, something like um, got, definitely got search and already the bounty. So we got the little bounty one already. So that's done. Um, no, he's on about like so. If you had like they've done there, where they've merged a few careers into one. Oh, what okay. kind of ship would? What else would you think would be a good sort of combo to put together? Do you know what I think would be really interesting, actually? You know, um, oh shit, what's it called? The big farm ship with the four pods on the side. The Endeavour. The Endeavour. Yeah. With that ship, one of the points of those farming pods is that you can go into nebula and stuff like that, so you can um, expose the plants to different types of nutrients and stuff like that. I'd love to see a small science ship like that where you can take a small mm. amount of crops like drugs or something like a space cannabis <laughs> and make an amazing strain of space cannabis so we can all get really high wouldn't that be awesome so you want like a, a nice cream van <laughs> for, for Pretty cannabis. Well. you just drive into different nebulas to get stronger cannabis <laughs> yes <laughs> nice don't smoke um, cannabis <laughs> drug drugs are bad children drugs, drugs are, bad. are bad please yeah. don't take any <laughs> Unless they're from the doctor, then do take what the doctor prescribes. Um, I'm trying to think. So, so suppose you would have, um, yeah, so it's like the prisoner says they're like a salvage and repair kind of go together. Uh, so they can do either job. Ah, but if you get more money for salvage, you go, look, mate, I'm sorry, your ship's not worth repairing. We're going to just start salvaging it instead. <laughs> oh, okay. I really I want to eat ships one. with my reclaimer with people still on them, you know. I think that'd be awesome. Well, this this one this one comes from you actually because you've inspired this one. This would be a racing refueling ship. Because it can get you that. really, that, uh, it's really really fast. It's one of the refueling. Racks. As it flies it's by, they just throw this canister, <laughs> just, small canister. You take this. As if you're super quick, <laughs> and then onto the next one. Up like, space. Like, <laughs> it could be actually. Do you know it could be. It could be the paper boy. Paperboy in space. Kind of, <laughs> kind of like, for fueling, refueling, that would be quite Next. cool, though. Next. Not going past yeah. the Port Olisar, all these crashed ships. Yeah, that would be, um, that, that would be my, uh, that would be my, my one, a racing refueling ship. Because obviously, it has to be really quick. I would Just say to... maybe something like to link with exploring would be quite useful. 
Mm. Racing, exploring, or just Race, exploring. Racing, exploring. Going no, no, back to Elite Dangerous for a second. Um, there is another. There's another. We're doing a Sorry, I don't mean to talk about Elite Dangerous so much, but it's like, I just keep coming up to remind me of it. But there is. Dangerous. There's an event I think uh, each year with Elite Dangerous where a big group of people go and explore distant worlds. I think it's called Distant Worlds together. Um, and it's really cool because, like, um, you just see, like, this huge fleet and they all um, land on the moon together and then they get into their rovers and do rallies together and stuff like that. And it's just, like, the most incredible thing. And I love the idea, actually, of having doing something similar with Elite Dangerous, uh, Elite Dangerous Star Citizen. And <laughs> I got Elite Dangerous on my mind, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> we just changed the title the Star of the Citizen. podcast. Elite Dangerous <laughs> Podcast. And having um, like this mix of uh, ship classes, and you all actually yeah. have because that's the thing with Elite Dangerous. You're all just, although you're doing this thing together, you are independent because you don't necessarily need each other. Um, yeah. But with Star Citizen, you will probably need each other because with Elite Dangerous, genuinely people do accidentally crash into each other and then they're completely out of the event which is a huge shame because it only happens once a year if you've got a crucible there then you get them repaired up and away you go again oh it's not even alcoholic um <laughs> you know and you have the refueling ships there etc etc and you know you have you have security with you so on and so forth you know i just think that's uh, yes, Knight Kai, we are all moving to Elite Dangerous now. I'm, Yay! I'm, I'm about to mute. I think we're going to be mute, mute, mute uh, Moist, because he just keeps talking about another game. It's just I'm shocking. sorry. This is a space game. Um, I haven't, I, to be fair, though, I haven't played Elite Dangerous because, you know, I'm a Star Citizen elitist, and I think Star Citizen is going to be way better. So, yeah, yeah I, I completely Speaking. agree. And what I would really like is for us to be able to right. uh to, to to build our own ships just like you can on kerbal space program because oh at the end of the day god. it's kerbal space oh, oh my god well i would i would i would i would love to be able to make my own ships and they did talk about it briefly i think somebody asked the question Let's on reverse the, uh, calling devs they asked about you know can we potentially you know you know make it a mine like mining for example could you make you know the vulcan a mining ship or could we put like, mining modules onto different things and you know could you make like a racer or a mining you know stick a mining bolt or bolt something onto like a hard point or something and turn it into a mining thing and they were kind of like no <laughs> <laughs> but it was but you got that impression of it, it was like no but we don't but then it's like, e we don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I think we'll wait until Chris says on this one. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I think a long to... time ago I mentioned you know. on one of the podcasts about um, liking sort of like Warhammer 40k, like the orc ships, how they're sort of scrapped together. So you get like a more rustic style ship rather than all these polished ones that you get at the moment. And I just remember CIG um, in chat just keep going, no. <laughs> No, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to just bolt I... things together. No, it's not going to happen. Now, so. there's a game called EVE Online. <laughs> but in seriousness, that's a bit like the Mimitar race, really. That, the, idea, <laughs> the idea is that they take part to, like, wedge them together, which I think is really kind of cool. But that's what I'd that's love what to see that in does, Star Citizen. But... That's what we need. We need yeah. ships with sails. Solar sails. <laughs> You know this game Sorry, called No Man's Sky, right? They do the <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good game. Should we talk about that one? <laughs> <laughs> and this game, there's a game called um, uh, X Wing, X Wing versus Tie Fighter. Do you remember oh, playing that one? Oh yeah, that was oh, mm, that was one of my favourite games growing up. That was awesome. I had a joystick for that one. Uh, yeah, we will we will talk about that on another show. Um, By the way, Wing Command is on sale on GOG. Go get it. No. Okay. Oh, okay. So we, we, we do actually. Start citizens. We have another question from um, Cecil. There's lots of things in the past that we think are good, but when you play it again, they're Cecil. Not. Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> Cecil, actually, is how he's put it. <laughs> Cecil. It's a, um, I was about to say, it's a good favorite idea. game that is not Star Citizen and not Sci-Fi. So, that kind of uh, my favorite game. That's, that's not sci fi. Would The Witcher be sci fi? No. That's not, there's no. Where's the science in that? No, that's called um, fantasy. There's, well, okay, fantasy. Uh, uh, the Witcher Talk at the moment. In a landslide. I, I think I'm sorry. It's, oh, it's, hard, it's hard not to 
I, I'm play, I'm engrossed in it again. I love it. Um, it's so good that everything about that game is insanely good. It's, it's got no bugs that I can hardly any bugs anyway. Now and again, there's a few things, but it's like epic in my opinion. So yeah, um, The Witcher. I'm really torn. At the you moment, dangerous. Because be... <laughs> no, no. Um, not allowed like, to be sci-fi. My, my yeah. choices are gonna sound really. Oh, not sci-fi. So that does. I was gonna say, I was. I had a choice of three: Warframe, but that's sci-fi. But the other two are gonna seem really lame. Either War Thunder or Euro Truck Simulator. <laughs> don't laugh at me. Don't judge me. Who are you? You don't know. I've played what farming I am. simulator, so don't worry. <laughs> I've actually got cattle and crops, so yeah. I can't but really Euro not, Truck but Simulator, Euro like, Truck there's simulator. just something about like putting on. Um, the radio and just driving that really chills me out for some reason it's bizarre and i had uh, a lorry driver actually message me on grinder this week so uh, my favorite my favorite lorry is mercedes actros which is what he drives so he might take me out for a, a jolly old ride I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> uh, let's uh, bring it back onto the Star Citizen again. Or maybe Elite Dangerous this time. How does that sound? Okay, Jesus Dad. Christ. That's the first. That's the first. That's the first one. I've never seen both my compadres go down. Well done, Moist. Good job. I don't know how we got that from your favourite game, but there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I'm good. I'm good. How, how about next podcast? Don't tell us how it went with the lorry driver. Oh yeah, dear. Don't, don't let me drink so much rum next the, week. It's going to be like the first twenty questions is going to be on the, on the podcast. They see everyone asking how the ride with the, the truck driver went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. sighs> me. Well, and Miz, how about you, mate? I don't know. Um, it's got very hard, isn't it? I have because I I don't feel like I've had a lot of time to play games at the moment. I have played a lot of um sort of like these newer ones like Tarkov and Hunt Showdown, but they're not polished games to say they're done. I suppose the latest one that I, I've I've started there's a couple that I have started that are really good, but I just haven't had the time to play, which is Warhammer, um Total War Two, uh, Total War and Total War Two. It's the other side far behind I am, and the other one is Divinity Original Sins Two. Um, they're both like RPG style games, and they're they're really good. Excellent, Divinity Sins, Divinity Sins Quality Two. I really am interested in playing. I bought it, I've got but it I haven't played it yet. I've got nobody to play with. My boyfriend has it, but he doesn't like playing games with me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> be fair, I don't play though. games with me either. <laughs> <laughs> We, don't, we could go all sorts of places. We've had truck drivers riding, boyfriends playing with boyfriends. I mean, it's just going all over the place. Oh, I didn't mean it's... it like that. I didn't mean it <laughs> oh, like mean that. that. Oh, okay, you mean that. Okay, I wasn't sure. I, was, I don't know, boys. I'm just lost. I was now. being I serious. I, I, I wasn't even making a joke when I was on about the truck driver. <laughs> oh. He just oh really wants to go for I a ride. I was actually being serious. He just wants to go for a ride. Right, so oh kind of Why can't you just take me bit. seriously? <laughs> Onto ships. Um, we didn't actually look at the terrapin, so um, there was. This... Yeah, let's do the terrapin. Right, I like the terrapin a lot. Now, I don't I mean without scanning mechanic in game, it's kind of a bit, a bit like, eh, you know what I mean. I can understand why it's not, but in terms of as a ship, I love the idea of having me and my mate in my ship, just kind of like trying to find shit. Do you know what I mean? Solo, like, isn't it? No, you got it's two like... seats. You got two, yeah, you've got the got front two seats, seat, but the... it's actually meant to be just a solo ship. Right. Well, I mean, when I, I first had the two seat. concept of it, well, no, technically it's a solo ship with two seats. It's not technically a. No, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying is that I will probably use it more as a like a uh, two two. If I, I can, think I it's think a shame that it doesn't, doesn't have two fun. seats. I agree with you on that. I I, I think I, I'd like <coughs> to get away from the single sheet single sheet ships at the moment. Single seat ships, um, because I just feel yeah. like this is meant to be a multiplayer game. I would just even just like, and I think someone said it before a long time ago. It would be just, you know, why do we need single seat? That even like just make it so that it's flyable as a single person, but just stick an extra seat in these ones. I, I would like to see them 
being that because that's what put me off of this terrapin it's like the the description of it and everything it, it sounds okay as a ship but when it, when they said it was like a solo gameplay mechanic and you're on your own there i feel like well i don't it doesn't sound that fun i would at least have somebody else to go with um however did the video the pictures that they showed of it the ship itself looks i'm really impressed with how it looks actually so it looks like a really nice ship i would really like to see more ships where the pilots are sat side by side yeah because i like the idea of um what... looking across at my friend and being like hello my friend how are you that's what i mean really, really, really you want to do i don't know for me especially like i play multiple games everybody knows that so for me i want to share the experience of doing this stuff with someone i feel like it's more interesting to be able to say have you fucking seen that rather than just sit on your own going oh wow this is amazing but i can't tell anybody because no one else is here no, I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't mind both. I like playing solo games and I like playing games with friends and stuff. So um, I, 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 that's why I like the Terrapin because I can do both in theory. I have, I know it has the second seat, it has the front seat and it has the, the scanning seat. So, you know, you can have your mate scanning in the back and you can be flying in the front, which I like because that way at least the person in the middle is doing something, has something to do, which would be quite a cool job, I think, scanning whilst the other person is trying to keep you alive, not crashing into things. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also show but I agree. a new mechanic here. The ship is flying with no pilot. Yes. Oh, remote yeah. control. Oh, remote oh, control <laughs> Terrapin is, is now confirmed. But this was, I was talking about this on my stream earlier. I, I was saying that, you know, what was interesting, someone was saying to me, there's you can't do the hover mechanic anymore in the future for things like the Sabre. Because at the moment they said, oh, look, guess what? The thrusters are going to come down and you can hover. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I could do that already, pal. Have you not played 3.3.1? I could just sit above Levski, no problem, in my saber forever. And someone said to me, ah, madness. But you won't be able to do that. And I was like, so hang on a minute. So it's literally going to be like Heathrow. Planes, ships. Yeah, so how are going. you going to land? Ships are going to be literally doing circles and trying to land ram into that tiny little space <laughs> with a little... Gre like, how are you going to do it? How can you land at Levski? You have to kind of go... Thrusters? I just did a uh, Rob, uh, Chris Roberts thing, didn't I? Ha uh, 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 <laughs> can, can I just say, man, this, you don't have to worry. I'll show you how to land a saber. <laughs> I, I, I ha I've perfected landing on pretty much any ship. I can I can show you oh how to God. land one. It's fine. No, it I won't just, be I hovering just, I was down like, nicely. They must, they, they must have a situ They must have some sort of hovering mechanic. Because, like, how, seriously, how are you going to and land? You get it level Unless... with the landing pad, and then you turn the engines off, and it goes, <laughs> Do you know, like in um, like Roadrunner cartoons when he you, runs off the edge of the cliff? Going... It's like that. <laughs> you, Unless you, you, they're intending you to use tractor beams to pull, like, pull you in, yeah, suck but, you in. But they currently um... have the, the green thing, don't they? Which no, kind they of you go have above and then you thrusters. Do... Are they not going to be strong enough to just bring you That's down That's what they've land? said. They, they've said that um, in the future, you're I'm sorry. Room, but thrusters just won't be powerful enough. Okay. Well, just make, then you can't. How can you land? It just. I'm sorry, but it's just well, that makes a freelancer ship you, because the engines did used to face ship. downward, so it could hover down. And now they took that mechanic out. So they take that mechanic out of it <laughs> face, and then turn it on. Face boys. We good. need cargo Argos now. <laughs> I, I, I. I'm sorry. I just. I don't. I mean. I need my I, dragonfly. If it makes, and that's about it. <laughs> I can. I was. If they said to us. If they said to me, for example, it enables this type of ship to land on very high gravity planets then I'd understand it because it can re invert its um, power to generate enough force to get you to go down onto a very high gravity or to take off from very high gravity planets. For example, if you crashed in a saber on like Jupiter, for example, the gravity is so high, you can't, you know, they use not enough thrust, whatever to get off. Whereas this little bad boy can go to those explore to those places that your normal ships can go. But I don't I'd know like, why cool. they, they've added it to that ship and then they've taken it away to like the Cutlass and everything else that used to have it. And then they take it away. But they should like, be able to land on. We love this think, mechanic, sorry. but we're not going to have that anymore on these ones. But we will put it on this new one. I, I just it didn't. It reeks of uh, again the head and the tail or whatever kind of like one saying one thing and the other thing doesn't quite know what it's doing. Um, I, I don't. Uh, it just doesn't feel well thought out at all. Judging on what we already currently have, I'm sorry. Just but it it does look sexy as a ship though. It's cool, it man. It's a cool look looking sexy. ship. It's such a cool looking ship. I love all the way, kind of, like I said, it. I can just, I feel like it's designed for going underwater as well, you know? They could make that an underwater vehicle as well. They or have. They, recently, was it this week or last week? The question came up about taking ships underwater, and they said, yeah. 
No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, they'll be probably, they might have specialist vehicles, but um, yeah, I like the idea of being able to land, like certain ships being able to land at least on water, dependent on like the weight distribution. I like the idea of seeing like, because there was somebody did that concept art, didn't they? Amateur concept art. Sorry, fan concept art of this the javelin. Little, I just like the idea of somebody actually doing that. Then the javelin going, <laughs> down she well, goes. Yeah, you're going la- <laughs> you, 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 to crash on. I mean, you're going to crash in water, right? Or some sort of kind of liquid substance of some kind. So something moist. Yeah, yeah, it's something moist, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, 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 I do. I mean, in my head, I just feel like certain ships. I honestly feel it would be super cool if certain ships have to have like extra armor thickness and be reinforced to be able to to withstand huge amounts of gravity and have the extra thrusters to be able to take off. For me, seems like a really cool but if there's in the game. Huge amounts of gravity. Yeah, they're going to struggle if they have that much armor. They're going to struggle surely to get. I haven't said that. In the, it's the future, isn't it? So they can have some like magical composite armors and all that sort of shit. It's so. like in reinforcement, so you can have you could you could just I'm just meaning three D printed Spread armor. Strength can be light. It doesn't have to be super, super heavy. Um, but I know it actually reinforce things over time. But anyway, it's just a, it's just a cool thought. Um, it might be something in the lore. I'd have to dig it out. I'm sure there's something somewhere written in the lore somewhere. Um, don't about you all, gravity planets. But don't you all remember seat. Fish that's Citizen? Uh, April's Fool joke a few years ago. I don't remember that. Yeah, fish your whole citizen. hangar was filled up with fish. <gasps> oh yeah, that was, <laughs> that was quite funny actually. <laughs> Oh, do you think I, I, inside the, the Terrapin, I was getting a real Sith vibe? It's the red lighting. I think. It's the red lighting, but the, it's also it's the, the blue the and the red lighting. Angles, it's all the yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very yeah. tight fighter ish. Yeah. Oh, inside it felt really Sithy, which is a good thing for me. I was like, yeah, I like it. It's selling it to me. It, yeah. Like it, that chair looks like Darth Vader would sit in that chair. Do you know what I mean? The back. Yeah. Getting, 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 getting his... Just see the terrapin spinning off into the distance. <laughs> so this hub, <laughs> Bye. The hub that they showed in it looks pretty fucking awesome, but you would need, yeah, like you said yeah. before, like having it all around you, you're going to need that oh. track of AR or the, the face ring mm. definitely to get you. But it, look, oh my it, god, it the looks HUD. so good. I haven't yeah, seen that. Like oh my that. god. That yeah, amazing. yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. That looks sick. I love so, I mean, all that, the panels all the way like, around. It's just like, do you know what that reminds me of? Elite Dangerous. They have panels all the way around the side of their shit. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> just Actually, that's the one thing I will it. write. Uh, it's that's, really that's... annoying, right? So to go to Elite Dangerous for a second, right? Oh, to compliment them on their head, it is really easy to use and it's quite intuitive. But it's the same on every fucking ship, which is really shit. Sorry, that let's is, move on. That is... No, but that is that's, that's a good point though. The, the the HUDs and stuff, I do think, um, in Star Citizen are quite unique and quite different. Um, generally down the halls, so it's quite interesting. I, that one's interesting. It looks like it's got the Gladius kind of HUDs there, the two big HUDs in the front. Mm, yeah. Um, with the um, and then but it's like the old the school saber ball, one the as well. Big blue ball. Yeah. Yeah, with the kind of thing again, which is like, is that that's like a saber cockpit in an anvil ship? Kind of looks oh, like, like very okay. high okay. up though. Eight, like, it's like an ageish weird. Your view. Ages as if your view's going to be restricted and everything's quite the, high up. The only problem yeah. is if you get a Skype call, Let's it's going it. to take you like five minutes to work out which monitor which that the screen is coming from. <laughs> Dad, oh, Dad, know. where are you, Dad? Really <laughs> freaking Skype noise. You're gonna, you'll learn to hate it. With a... <laughs> it's like those <laughs> awkward <laughs> moments in uh, Ask the Devs where like he calls them and then they're like, Jared? Hello! <laughs> this is the Hello. section where I call you, remember? Sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Is Sorry, Jared yeah, still no, no, no. ill? Does anybody know if he's recovered yet? I've been worried about Jared. If he hasn't mentioned it, then he's probably recovered. Because otherwise, uh, okay. you, know, you, you would know about it. <laughs> you, you would know. You would know. Um, so, yeah, I thought that looked really nice on the other side. I was wondering, the Terrapin, although I had no interest in it, it's, um, the, the details they've done on it is really good. And this one was just showing off. I know we've looked at it a little bit earlier, but this was just showing off like damage states, and it was talking about um, how they wanted to break apart like the different sections i mean the yeah. fact that it blows up with a pistol is not so good that's the dev <laughs> i know it's a joke <laughs> <laughs> sorry okay i'm a little bit See, i didn't really think that he just, just he's saying. Really heavy armored terrapin and he takes a few <laughs> shots of the pistol and he goes you found my weakness son 
<laughs> it's the golden gun. That's what it is. That's what your thirty k. If you're back in, yeah. if, you're, if you pin thirty k on the uh, on Star Citizen, you get this golden gun that one shot to yeah. therapy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they should have done. They should have used a golden gun. That would have been awesome. You will pay, but not pay to win at all. One gun, <laughs> just put a hand pistol. <laughs> that's what those size ones do, basically. That's what they're saying. They're size ones, scatter guns. Um. I think it's amazing. I, when I first saw this technology, when the guy showed us how they were doing it, um, I think it was a year ago now, or at least six, seven months ago, they showed us the uh, damage states and how they had created this technology to kind of age and wear in areas. Mm. Was, I was like, wow, that is amazing. And uh, yeah, I still am amazed by it. Every time I see it, I just go, you know, when ships blow up, I, I mean, the explosions the stream, they know, that's what I do. Explosions mm. are awesome. And, it's great and I love it. And um, the damage and looking at your ship when your ship, you know, when you've been like firebombed or something and you, you, you know, you see the whole side of ships like burnt yeah. to a cinder and like you kind of all the shredded areas. It's, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. It adds to the immersion and they just keep adding to it. So I'm really excited by that stuff. It's, it's, it's great. The, jobs. Other, the other thing they then sorry. showed off, which is like the just one second, on, sorry, you know, go. you know, they're on about, um, I forget the name of the tech, but like the gases in rooms and gases being able to escape rooms and be vented and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Do you reckon that we will see mm. explosions due to certain gases, gases being in rooms or like like when we see flames in space, that'll be as a result of oxygen escaping from those rooms? I've never really probably. thought about it before. I think we probably well, will the... see where like, you know, the gases, if you light the gas it'll blow up i don't know they seem to want to go realistic with a lot of things but yeah that's really interesting i not thought about think it. about think about levski like you know the big flaming pipe sticking out the mm, like have your cigarette in your ship and boom well, and effectively that is, i think it's gas or some sort of thing that's being released and being set on fire so i would imagine that would be a feature i mean it would be super cool to you know use it to your advantage if you could like you know hack it hack the system and flood it with like a, a gas that can explode or something or pure yeah. oxygen or light throw a match in can you imagine if um be cool if like you speak about those those big those, those big towers releasing the gas or something say we could mine gas can you imagine like being on your plot of land and then like cross drilling into somebody else's land and siphoning their gas you'd end up with a rack invading you <laughs> wouldn't you <laughs> fucking hell well, it's I did. So this is this is this to do with the um is the the fact that people have been asking questions about will we be able to, to you know interact with more of the the objects around us to be able to yeah, like, take I mean, systems out. This is showing off out, some of the component like system, Hellion. I suppose, because like they said, we got the first iteration mm. of the components in, but you can't necessarily interact with them more. This is looking a lot more like switch, Hellion didn't now, he? with the things that yeah. opening up and having access to oh, the console go. panels and stuff. Um, yeah. apart from when they showed the toilet, but. The light switch he got really excited about, and I understand why he got really excited about, because that was the whole point of Object Two Point. Uh, sorry, con was it container streaming? Dude, Object Two Point Oh. Toilet though. Look. I... Oh, what Which toilet? Hang on. Did the bit. toilet work? But it's one of those like stand up, squatty things, isn't it? No, it's not. Your, a seat, do you yeah. press your bum against the wall? No, the oh. seat just looks like a seat. It doesn't look like an actual toilet seat. Well, with the one with a hole in the bottom of it. I don't know. It might come up from the ground, just like the hot tub. No, that's a chair in like a shower chair. That the, the ain't a toilet, actually. I don't even think there's a toilet there. It's just a, like a shower cubicle. Yeah, it's, a, it's the bathroom. It, it's the bathroom. Just sit on the sink. Yeah, I know. That's probably what I would do. There's no freaking toilet. <laughs> there's no U bend. There's a chair. <laughs> you can sit on the stall and have a chat, but there's no toilet. Even though it's one of those ones you know, like you have in Asia, where you just stand. Maybe the toilet comes out of the wall or something. On. Why are we thinking about it this is... too much? I, I, the toilet, the toilet thing is such an. I don't even care about it. But they did talk about the shower. They again, they reinforced again this. This whole, you know, if you don't bathe, you smell, and then people react to you in different you, so ways your, and stuff you, like your, that. Are you bothered about that? Um, well, they, to be fair, they, they have mentioned now that to using the toilet will actually need to be a thing. And, like, if this is a ship where you're going deep, um, then you're going to need a fucking toilet, right? 
well, if they're going to make if all right, here's the way I look at it, if they're going to make toilets like a real legitimate thing, and they're going to make that like an honest thing. I do not want to be in the middle of a combat scenario, and then suddenly have to feel the need that I need to take a shit because my body in the real world would naturally tell me you are potentially going to die and suppress that need to go to yeah. the toilet. So yeah. you know, if they're going to do that, they need to make it so that you can potentially, in the dangerous situations, that suppresses the need for a prolonged period of time until you, you know. I can, I can safely say it's probably a mechanic I could live without. Oh, this like, is my getting, summer car all over again, isn't it? Getting and having to go to a toilet, I can, I can live without those mechanics. Yeah, same. I, what, I was ho- what, I'm, what I'm still hoping they will do is things seen. like eating will provide you with buffs rather than negative effects. That's what I really hoped would happen. Well, they well, did say you, you will Chris, gain Chris Roberts once. stamina and stuff from it, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you'll perform a bit better if you've been eating. If you're obviously dehydrated or whatever, you'll obviously and perform we're less. Get punished. Like, if we're like, we are now like streamers that sit here and like to eat pizza and donuts and shit, we're going to be crap. Talk about yourself. You ain't going to be able to run. <laughs> well, okay, I am talking about myself, but you're going to run like on the battlefield two steps and you're like, <gasps> no, you're going to be forced. Now, it's bad enough that the, you know we've been forced to eat healthy food in life. Now we're going to eat healthy food in game just to make sure that we can actually run up a flight of steps. Get over it. It's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> It all depends on what the percentages are. Are we talking, you know, like a 9, 10% boot? Well, at boost the moment, you can't run. Well, no, nah, they changed it, didn't they? When they first did Star Marine, you couldn't run to the other side of the stairs without. They always seem to implement the worst case scenario to start off with and then slowly <laughs> ease back. 26, yeah. a, 26 a minute. <gasps> I'm dying! I don't know, like, I get that one. It's really weird. Like, the minute. This is the thing, is as well. It's like any kind of any piece of heavy armor that you put on you, it could be like, you know, like a pair of heavy armor socks, for example, and suddenly you are encumbered as if you were carrying 90 pieces of heavy pieces of armor and you've got like a house on your back and you literally are about to die. Because that's the thing for me is like, oh, I put a heavier helmet on because it's got heavier armor, so it's a little bit heavier, but now I'm out of breath after about five seconds of running. It, it does seem to me like they need to do the balancing on the pieces. So like if you're wearing the chest piece, that's going to weigh more, like a weight system like Scum uses, um, you know, where the, the individual items have a weight ratio and obviously the more weight you carry it slows you down the less weight you carry the more you speed up that's the way i kind of would imagine it but it doesn't seem to be that yeah because we're in alpha i mean there's something that's probably going to happen but i think at the moment that's, I hope so. that's I obviously hope so. things are just stuck in i mean the scum mechanics the way they're doing it is pretty stunning yeah Did you see that? pretty amazing you see the, and like the fact video? that when it gets wet in the rain and then that gets heavier and things like that it's yeah it's pretty amazing Eviscerator um, says, if I remember right, a long time ago they discussed the possibility of exercise rooms slash gyms where you could work out to be stronger and increase stamina. I love that idea, and it's one of the things I loved about San Andreas, believe it or not. Do you think that's what they're going to well, do? Because well, scum- I hope so. Because doesn't that it gives, give gives you, like... the point? It gives a point to gyms on big but ships like Idris's. Doesn't that also uh, mean you start javelin. getting stats for characters, which they kind of said you're not supposed to have stats for characters. Well, it doesn't need to be. It would give Can you, you imagine the role play? Though? Can you imagine the role play? It'll be awesome. Yeah. You'll be running around going, bro, what's up, bro? Yeah, bro. Bro, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, br- bro. I'm, yeah, br- yeah, bro. <laughs> Slapping each other on the ass. Man, you're yeah. looking hench. <laughs> yeah, man. Woo. Drop a key, I, like, I, don't know, like, I, I, I don't mind it being in. There's things like Tarkov. Hench. The more you loot things the better you get at looting the more you carry the heavy it's gear gone. then it levels up your ability to to carry heavy gear but the downside is that yeah that means that every character is going to have some form of stats and that's what they said that you're not going to have anything like that you're not going to be able Doesn't to matter. level up it d- so i can't see them doing that i mean I, like i said i've got no problem doing it but it, it just kind of goes against what they said technically every every character has a stat but it's whether or not we see those stats. Well, the stats I don't the, think the we will necessarily armor and stuff, though, aren't we? But what I mean is, there is a file in the game that has like a certain walk speed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think we don't necessarily need to see numbers, but it would be nice to know if I'm doing a workout in a gym, then I might be able to run a little bit longer. You know, I don't mean yeah, from like a five-minute workout, but. You know, if I regularly go to the gym, um, then I might be able to run for longer with heavier armor, if that makes sense, you know. And it kind of gives you more of a... Um, yeah, the, R- the RP part of it is, is quite nice. But if you want to be, like, a heavy marine, 
Um, it gives you more of an excuse to live the life of a heavy marine, if that makes sense. Rather no, than I'm, being a heavy marine for one for minute. It. I just then... thought it was what they were against, having any of that sort of stat. But I know, it'll be interesting to see if they do it. If they do put it in, yeah, it will be interesting to see how they handle it. Um, because I think that's got to be the way to do it, is kind of repeating something, um, doing <laughs> jobs that would aim towards that. Um, but then I think it's like, if... where do you stop then? Because you do, you do have it, just have a gym so that you, you build your yeah. muscles up. Do you then get better at like hacking in a computer because you've done it multiple times? It's like, well, once you this... put that, where do you draw the line on that? But I think with hacking scum though, mechanics. That... hang on, hang on. This is the scum mechanics that you guys, this is literally the game scum because they are basically doing that. They are building a game where your character, if you do lots of running, you get really yeah, good at running. If been you done build already, your muscles, but, yeah. you get really good at, get really good at buttons. In terms of hacking, hacking yeah. is a, a thing you actually have to think about. It's a skill Eagle that skill, you need yeah. to learn, whereas running isn't really something that you can learn, if that makes sense. So going to the gym, I wouldn't have a problem with. Hacking if you got better at hacking through hacking like it, your hacking speed became quicker like loading screen lo loading bars were quicker or something like that yeah then no i would be against that <laughs> if that makes sense yeah yeah okay. you know maybe you, you're you're as you get better at something you get more advanced at using better pieces of equipment for that because i know they talk about the 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 items being like the ships being you know, you, you can then use a piece of gear better, or you can let you know. I, I would, I, if I, I keep exposing would... myself to a disease, will I get more resistance? <laughs> you will actually, do you know, it sounds daft, but I has... kind of like, I'm not against that kind of idea. It's, I am against real. it, does that in time, though, because the more damage you take, the better that... you are at like <laughs> taking damage. Yes, we and have, being wounded. We, our bodies have an adaptive immune system, you can, in theory eject inject like poison into your body and it will eventually Not gain in theory immunity. that is how the jabs work that is how measles jabs flu jabs and everything else mm. work it is injecting a piece of the yeah. disease in you that's not in, it's not theory <laughs> that's what happens okay so yeah so there you go so your point was sorry i'm confused then i'm gonna start injecting said, myself with the aids are we going to be saying? able to expose ourselves oh. to build up our resistance <laughs> i don't um, see why not so I mean... uh, using tools to get better at using tools as a stat, I'm against. But if it's things like natural things, like your body getting stronger and stuff like that, I'm fine with. Thanks for that convo, guys. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, no, it's nothing to add. I agree. I agree. I don't know. I do agree yeah. with you. Happy I think with it, it, passive sort of stats, physical. but. And it also, I mean, by adding that, which I do agree with, to be honest, in fact, I would like it in there because I think adding something like that would make death mean more as well. Because like at yes. the moment, yeah. you know, I know you're going to lose shit if you have permanent death, but if, if, if you have permanent death and then you just get cloned into a new body or uh, it's supposed to be a relative, then all you're losing is some of your rep and stuff. But yeah, if you actually lost your time that you invented, uh, invented invested in going to like, I don't want to go to the fucking gym. No, I don't do it in real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? But yeah, no, I mean, no, you'd you'd lose that stuff. It, it, yeah, it so, just it gives um, it would people who are committed the edge. Yeah, it would definitely make um, you know. more make you think more about your life and make you take um, less of a risk. I think. The prisoner says they did talk about a virus that might affect a planet or system. Uh, do you either of you guys talking about another game again sorry do you remember um the virus in world of warcraft like in 2005 2006 yeah well i don't but I, like, I know of it and i wasn't like it. something like that happening in star citizen where slowly a virus spreads across like most of the population of the game because even the developers like blizzard struggled to contain that which was crazy yeah they said <laughs> It's not going oh to really? Oh, that's a um, shame. Yeah, because they said because of that reason, it's too uncontrollable. Yeah, and it can ha affect far too much of the game. So they did. Uh, Matt Sherman said it quite a few times when we've mentioned it on the podcast. And he's going, "No, it's never going to happen." He goes, "It got out of control even in World of Warcraft." Yeah. He said, and it didn't affect things. So yeah, he said it's yeah. just, just. It wasn't even intentional, and it wasn't yeah. designed to do that. No. But no. that's the problem. It will. It's like any virus. Like you actually get a real yeah. situation where you've got to contain it because otherwise you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I awesome. think that was it. Really. For did we ever talk hunt. about the HUD? I don't think we talked about the HUD. Did we? Well, I showed you the Terrapin HUD. <laughs> oh, was that it? Else. Oh, maybe that was yeah, it. I was looking at the. I'm looking at the picture of the Hornet.
one. It's the Hornet one. It's nice. Mm. It's a nice improved hat. It's nice really to see nice. The clarity of the ship. And nice yeah, to see nice. the colors. Yeah. As well. I mean, just what? Just one color. It's nice yeah. to see a few other colors on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I'm being honest. So we've got red. Yeah, that's that's really nice. Very very happy with that one. And there's, what? I think there was. Hmm. What what are you on about? It's on the document. It's literally like you, you see FPS. Yeah, it would probably be a good idea, I guess. Well, you're HUD talking about it, Gandhi. I really like that one, and no one's looking at what you're looking at. Hard improvement. Oh, sorry. Hard improvement. Yeah, it's you just. Know there. What? Well, I can show no, that's it. You've made it. That's the tiniest fucking picture I've ever seen. No, no. The one next to it. The one underneath it. That's the Hornet one. I was just to say that the visors, the HUD improvements are being fixed. And then the next one just actually shows the Hornet. That wasn't oh, me. That was just. Sneak peek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that one's. There we go. And this is the improvements, which I think look pretty good from what I can see. That was kind Cross of one of the biggest grumbles. Much is more a lot of the HUDs is still it? hard to read. Yeah. yeah much a lot more readable. It's, everything seems a lot clearer on there. It's nice to see the but ship. More of the ship. Bearing in mind that is uh, a screen, not like the heads up display, so to speak. So whether or not I think they like... were the same though because we didn't, didn't last week we showed the one where they were showing the armor and that on your Moby glass and it looked I'm pretty yeah well I'm pretty like sure that. that there's still texture what's it called texture on texture I can't uh, oh what's it called God damn it texture in texture I can't remember that is whatever picture in um oh. picture in picture thank you but um yeah the problem with the heads up display that we see in front of us in the ships is that it's a one fixed color. And then when you have a, that same color behind it, you can't see it. So they need to design a engineer a system where that color changes slightly. Whether, like, I don't think it'll change to, or I can't imagine, imagine they would make white turn to black, but I would imagine they will get the color to change to a slightly darker or lighter tone, yeah. um, depending on what's behind it. So, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, anything to make it more visible will be uh, a huge benefit to everybody. Um, but what I like about this is, is I can see, you know, the ship that I'm shooting at, the hostel, is a Hornet, blah, blah, blah. I just like it. It's just a bit more information, quick and easy. Um, so, yeah. Like I said, a lot of you, a lot, it's quite interesting. They've gone away from big information displays, but then from what they used to do on the old, you know, we saw on the 2.0 or even the 1.3 HUDs were very clear. Lots of information quite big on the screen and then they kind of stripped it away. But then I think a lot of the call has come back to like, hey, hang on a minute. What's really important when you're that. throwing that much information at somebody is how you break up the information to blocks. So you have a block for, say, uh, shielding and armor. Uh, and you make that one color, which I think is what they've done here, you know, and then you have um, another block that's a slightly different color for like the energy levels of whatever, you know, you just break it up, make it obvious. So when you're glancing up and down, every time you glance up and down, you know to look for that color rather than if it's all blue, you, you look down and you spend more time trying to work out which block is which because it's not segmented. And, I, you know, I think they've done a really good job of that. And I agree. I think it's it's uh, like having how you divide it up, right? so you know where you're looking and having the right information linked together. So you're not looking for one bit there and then it's linked to the same thing, but you have to look over to the other side as well. So, but we I think that the HUD we've said it before is going to be something that is going to get updated and updated over and over again, um, and that's going to be down to I think player feedback a lot as well. You know, saying how it works, how it doesn't work, um, and that sort of thing. I think. Yep. Uh, oh, um, interesting topic of conversation. Um, Star Citizen staff has grown to 475. That it's is still increasing, big, I believe, as well. That is a big studio when you think about Rockstar being, you know, 300 to 360 to 400, yeah. roughly. Rockstar but now. what you have to bear in mind that 475 is across all of the studios. Yeah. Rockstar North is one studio in oh, Scotland. Sure. Oh, not sure. Scotland. They had about, um, where they is had, it? Somewhere up north, I think they yeah. had on Grand Theft Auto 5, they had working on the, that about 1,000 people. I think, oh, it is Scotland, I think. 
to make Grand Theft yeah. Auto V. But what you have to no. bear in mind is that I am under no illusion that once Star Citizen is out, that number will come down. It has to. It's like any like when you when you start you staff up to make films and stuff. You yeah. staff up. That's just the way it is, and then when the works there, it will come down. Of course, it will. Uh, well, actually, no. I say that it all depends. They might roll on to Star Citizen Two or the DLCs. Or I like I like the idea of them moving on to other projects, other games. But, yeah, you never know. We'll see. Yeah, be interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought they would, but you never know. I mean, they might. I mean, I don't. I don't see why they couldn't. In theory, well, it's whether they want um, to. They, they made the the company so that they can make Star Citizen. It's, it's whether he has passion for another game that. You know that he would want to make, or no, I think, it might be I, I think this. I think it's less likely. I think it's more likely universe. to see expansions or add-ons to this. I think mm, more likely yeah. to see more more of Squadron Forty Two. You know, they'll keep. I think yeah. you're more likely to see more that, of that being made if they're going to do anything. The prisoner asked, "Does that include Turbulent?" I don't believe it does because Turbulent isn't part of Sit. Isn't no, no. This is a separate entity. Squadron Forty Three. <laughs> <laughs> 43, 44. Uh, no i'm uh no it's just it's it's i mean it just it's again it, it rules out for me you know a lot of the kind of naysayers they, they clearly you know like i said you wouldn't be doing a lot of nonsense if you were you know if you weren't didn't believe in it they're staffing up they need staff it's good to see um you know uh so yeah um it's good it's good stuff so the other thing is something you have to bear in mind is that um they might not continue doing game development or if they continue doing game development they might actually do game development for other publishers um they yeah. might start doing now they've got the mocap studio they might start doing movie stuff they might start doing mocap for other games so i think you know i think we'll more likely see them doing stuff for other people because they're building such a huge reputation you know i think it all depends on the game i think it could be a case of like i've always considered star citizen to be like a star warsy you know type of kind of ambition you know mm -hmm. and creating a universe for itself starters is creating a universe itself so for me is once the game is finished and if it does achieve the high expect you know the high bar that they've set for themselves it will be the greatest space simulation game multi multi mmo single player whatever game of all time it just will be because it can if it achieves it, it it's the greatest so for me like star wars it will generate its own universe and so it will be able to do loads like from film like you talked about He's already done it once yeah. with, obviously, Wing Commander, so he's to say he wouldn't want to maybe do a Star Citizen type of film or something or a TV show or, you know, who knows? Who knows? Once he's done it, once the game is released, <coughs> so many things, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, did you know, by the way, that there's a... I didn't know that there was a limit to how much you could gift in a day. Yeah. I think I it's like for it was uh, money laundering and stuff like that purposes. Damn. Do you know how, many, you know how much it is? Isn't it something like a thousand? Mm, it's a thousand for a day. Oh, damn. Anything. That ruins my plans. Oh, yeah. No. Wish Noodle was just about to download me from 1,500. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so close. I did not know that. I did not yeah, know it's that. Yeah, it's, and, it's and just guess... to do with money. It's to do with like fraud and stuff, basically. Sure. Sure. No, no. It makes sense. It makes sense. I just didn't realise what it was. Thank you very much. Exactly. I was like, you could make everyone an instant concierge. Um, and then just pass it around. The I was going to say, the one... There's two things I had left to, to talk about. Unless there's any questions. Three things. <laughs> no, go on. I two things. Two things. Like, I've got three things. things. <laughs> three things to talk about. Just two. Just two. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Um, uh, <laughs> The first one is, is like, again, what we're talking about in terms of ships that don't get any love, like RSI. Someone said this in in, uh, in the Reddit, and I agree with them. He says, is like, you know, it seems that the Anvil and Aegis and the Misks are the heroes, whereas, like, the um, Rodbert Space Industries is meant to be, like, the oldest ship manufacturing the, the lore of the game, and it seems to have so few ships. Um, is this because, do you think, this is, this is that RSI will be more... For the MMO versus Squadron Forty Two, it's because they're old and they and they're not forward thinking, so they're stuck in the mud of designing these old ships and where you get <laughs> these younger companies who are more, uh, you know, more ex picking people with more imagination rather than these old dinosaurs going. But I like my square <laughs> ship and it flies <laughs> well. Why should I change it? 
<laughs> so that's basically what it is. It's the old. It's it's out. Miss reckons it's it's, it's dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. I kind of agree. Dino, with that. The, the, dino, the dinosaurs. I like that. That's a good reason. I like that answer. Um, well, we and then the next, <laughs> my, <laughs> my final question, our final thing was, is that um, this is this is because we always criticize CIG for not responding to the community fast enough, and I want to kind of put this out there as to say, well done, because there was um. Uh, I believe, let me just dig it out because I need to read it out quickly. Some of you might have seen it, some of you haven't seen this, but I feel like it's always fair to try and show a positive view, but it was um, I think it was a gentleman called Admiral Sloth he said here, we have a new support ship coming out soon. I can't tell you what it is though. Okay, I know exactly now, what it is. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I know, know what you know. it is. <laughs> I know what it is. It's a search and rescue ship, right? And by a search and rescue ship, right, it's just a little escape pod that you pull around in EVA. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody on reddit posted it out saying it's not a vulcan it confirmed it's not the vulcan and they were kind of like trying to kind of it could potentially have spread into you know this whole thing about it being something else anyway quite literally within the day on the day of it he comes in saying i'm going to stop this before it's taken any further out of context i was referring to the vulcan, to the vulcan. oh <laughs> <laughs> it was not my fault i was tagging people in my response um i'll be better about that he says because obviously he's learning he's just accepting that obviously yeah i think he meant um, it was not the nice vulture that's what it was someone vulture. mentioned the vulture, vulture and i think he sorry. might have put vulcan no i think he might have said it's yeah. not the vulcan but what he meant was it's not the vulture yeah. because the vulture people was something forget. that people voted on People forget that devs are people, right? And they're not these almighty are beings people. that are perfect all the Excuse time. Excuse me, I've seen them at Britishism Con. They are indeed almighty beings. It's like every time you see IG stuff, we are not worthy. Please, no, touch me. no. I, I'll, 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 I know Matt Lightfoot will come up to me. I'll be like, "Who are you?" That's weird. I just mentioned Britishism Con, and like the freaking chat bot just went, "Oh, Britishism Con." It knows. It's become it sentient. It's listening to the fucking conversation. Damn. So yeah. But, yeah, so if you do oh, wish yeah, to I meet just... some of these almighty devs, you can find them at Bridison Con. Brid... Yeah. Well, well done, well done, CIG. Though, because we always, I always kind of, we always give them no, a we, bit of a hard yeah. time. But I mean, we did well kind of go over this last week in terms of, of the responses we're getting now. At least in that terms, are a lot better. They are responding to well people done. on on like Reddit and Spectrum and things a lot more. It's the the official sure. information sometimes that is a little bit lacking, but. Um, yeah, I, I do. Well, I agree. I think it's down. good that they interact that way, and and cut yeah. things like that out when it's getting ridiculous and people go, "Oh my god, I'm gonna get this." No, you're not. No, no we are yeah. not. So, okay, so good, is that good, it? Do the last few questions. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Right. So we have a question from Jester, and he asks Madness, "Will you break into concierge just for the hangar flare bottle that you can't drink?" No, fuck no, I don't care. I could have, I could have broken into the concierge as and when this last two months, but I've not. There's, the, there's nothing I want. I mean, I've I've been. Um, Cray has kindly got me a um, a uh, the cyclone um, um, at discount, which was really kind of him. So I've got that now. So that was the only thing kind of left, really. There's nothing else other than an alien ship, maybe a. I'd like a glade, but they're just, but they're just so in, expensive. I'm, I'm not like interested in alien range. ships whatsoever because I'm going to put my hands up in the air now and say I'm a racist. <laughs> you're, you're a humanist. I don't want to. I don't want to touch this shit. <laughs> and there goes Twitch <laughs> ban instant bye. Goodbye everybody. It was alien nice racist. I meant alien racist. <laughs> you mean? Oh my god. <laughs> Under the new Twitch oh! terms and conditions, Moist Needle has now just condemned himself <laughs> and me for the Twitch. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I, <laughs> I want alien race ships. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I'm not I, racist. Uh, I yeah. like aliens. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll buy. I'll buy their wares on the Banu Merchantman. Just uh, as long as they don't talk to me, that's fine. Just, just stop. Stop. Just stop talking. Just <laughs> generally, just like no. stop. <laughs> It was the meme. This is like, oh my god, what the hell? Um, last time we will say your lovely face back. <laughs> okay, next question is from the prisoner, and I think we kind of answered this anyway. Um, I don't know, Vulcan, depending on really what it can hold, how viable is it for fuel, 
rearm and repair it's so small we kind yeah. of did go through it we think that earlier in the podcast we would um if you watched the rerun on that but we mentioned about how it would be good for small skirmish type things it's meant to be like an aa truck so it's a, a roadside assistance so i think it will be limited and it will definitely not be an outstanding ship if you think it's going to be an amazing thing that can do all three um i think it's ju it's just going to be something that will get you going I have this vision in my head, right, of this small fleet of Vulcans going to repair a javelin, right? And then, oh no, we've run out of materials, what do we do? And the next thing you see, it cuts to this javelin being towed by 30 small Vulcans. Just pulling it. <laughs> Come on, boy! With the tractor beams. <laughs> yeah. the, barge, the barges of space. Yeah. That would be I, awesome. Uh... Okay, <laughs> and the last question is from Seesaw. <laughs> He's changed his oh, name now that. just so I can read it properly. Seesaw. Why, why the Cecil. H in front? Can I just ask? Why the H Seesaw yeah. rather than just that Cecil? Um, he Who asks... Uh, Maybe least, it's Spanish. It's because his first name's actually Herbert. Herbert, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Least favourite shipping game currently. Oh... Um, the P fifty two. I've got two. I've got two. I've got two actually. Z mine are currently the Reliant and the Tonk. Oh, it's not in game. Though, no, yeah. Currently in Reliant. game. Oh, it's not in game. But that's what we'll I'm saying. But the Reliant, Reliant is in game. Yeah, yeah. Just a pile of shit. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, mine would be the Reliant. I would like a love hate because I love the look of it, but I hate the way it flies at the moment. I mean, mind you, I haven't flown it for ages to see if it's been updated or made better, but yeah, the Reliant is... It's sort of like you blow on the wing and it, that's it, you're screwed. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. fly anymore. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, but I do like the look of it. Although, like, in Moist Noodle, as you are saying, that like, you'd like the two pilots to sit next to each other. And as soon as you go, all right, mate. <laughs> like, I'm not talking. <laughs> you Dave, it's where like, are you I'm going, Dave? Anymore, and, like, <laughs> stick them underneath if you have an argument. <laughs> it's like one of those annoying car That's... journeys when you're going on for ages. Like, and then you go, look, shut up. And they won't. Hang on a minute. Let me just change config and stick you on. <laughs> you know, that's the best thing about the cutlass is like if you go into the cutlass i thoroughly recommend if you're going to be the passenger take a box of popcorn with you and then you can just throw popcorn at the guy in front i of wouldn't you. i wouldn't want to be the person down below can you, can you imagine if you, the person above you pees himself oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> shits himself pisses himself does a massive fart it's gonna be coming straight at you pretty much not a good not a good place uh, to be i agree um but it's quite funny um yeah, so what did we say? What was it? I said Reliant. You said Reliant as well, Miz. P52, I hate. Cause is that really a ship, though? It's like a... Is it it like can't a jump point. anywhere. It's like, a, it's like an escape It has BB it? guns on it. Um, and it's it can't even fucking... It's a, it, it can't it's even, it can't even detach itself from the fucking constellation. <laughs> No, it's, 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 it's been stuck laugh. in there for a long time. <laughs> it's been shoved up there and stuck up there for a long time. <laughs> And, that, and people are going to hate me, but I don't know, don't like the way it looks either. It's like one of those so, ones you go to the hospital for, and then all the doctors, instead of actually helping you, just go, look what he's got stuck up his ass. <laughs> it's like, Whoa. It's, it's and like something about, about Mary. <laughs> open the door. Open the window. <laughs> Everybody's coming round. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think that's it. <clears throat> I think so. I think tonight has been fun. I've enjoyed this evening. Okay, it's everybody. Um, we're going to wrap it up it's there. Thank fun. you very much for the questions. Uh, we'll Hello. find someone to host. Who want to suggest anybody? Oh, let's uh, let's have a look. Let's see the who is on. on could, uh, host him. We got any uh, new people? We always like to host new people. I always say if we can. There's loads of people streaming, but I don't know anyone. Right. We always try and get someone. Oh, the few. The few is streaming. Yeah, but he's top. He's fine. Oh, yeah. He's doing okay. a giveaway. He'll be. He'll get people. Is there <laughs> anyone down here? Anyway, bottom... then if he's... He's doing exactly. a giveaway. Oh, let me. Let me see stuff. who Maybe I not. know. There's some guy. Uh, miserable. No, I never heard of him. I wouldn't know him. That's for sure. Um, uh, ATC Guardian. Ah, I catch shenanigans. Yeah, I've watched him before. He's quite decent. He streams he with a few. I he's, think playing so, yeah. few. he's playing with go. the few. He's playing with the few. So go on. Dump our load on house. him. We dump the load on the friend of the few rather than okay, the few. We'll do yeah. So yeah. what are you guys doing this week? 
So yeah. And where um, can we find you? We're going to raid in a minute. So this week, um, yeah. man, this you want to go first? Um, I'm kind of be probably doing lots of colours for my boss because she can't use Illustrator on computers. Um, so <laughs> I'll be doing lots of shoes, shoes. Um, and I'll be streaming Witcher and Star Citizen. Um, and maybe Subnautica as well. We'll see. I'll be going along. I'm kind of. Subnautica's kind of. I got to the stage where I need to find a base, and I'm finding it hard to navigate to this base. So, yeah. I imagine you playing that in VR. <laughs> oh, that would be so. Literally, funny. I would have to wear a nappy. I would probably piss myself because I'm so terrified. <laughs> it is terrifying. The idea of that, just no. I would scream like a little girl for sure. Just like the hunt when we saw the spider. <laughs> Oh, the hunt. i got to get that video done also, or clip that bit when we was against the spider. We, yeah. We were not brave. It was <laughs> hilarious. hilarious. I'd never been, the like, fucking thing oh. climbed the ceilings and shit. It was like... It's like a massive hell. spider, like Shelob from, from um, like, and Lord it was of fast. the Rips type of thing, in a barn, and it was quick. Like, it just scuttered everywhere, and the next thing you knew, it, like, drops down and, like... Oh, like me and Miz are there with like guns. I can't deal like... with spiders. No, thank I you. missed oh. so many freaking times with that gun. I was like, <laughs> oh, I, I was shot. I think we shot each other about four times. <laughs> it's just hilarious. But um, it was terrible. Yeah. We'll, have to, we'll have to try and clip that. That was actually quite good. We'll put it on. Yeah. The... So I'll be getting my hunt video yeah. up later. But yeah. Okay. So good you. stuff. Um, yeah, that'll be that me. What are you up to? Catch me on my. Oh. Oh, me? Hmm. Um, my rift should be here on Wednesday, so once that arrives, uh, I'll be uh, playing Elite Dangerous. Everybody, <laughs> Elite Dangerous. Where did uh, we ask? Maybe some Euro Truck Simulator. Probably some more Elite Dangerous. Where did we ask? Um, Star Trek Bridge Crew, which I'll be playing with uh, Maya. So uh, Maya's going to have to teach me how to stream because uh, Maya has is able to bring up his Twitch chat. When he looks to the right in, yeah, there's something, there's in the VR, yeah, yeah so I need, I need his help with that. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's cool. Excellent. And myself, um, as usual, Friday we're going to do some D and D. So if you haven't watched that before, if you don't think you like D and D, still come and watch anyway because it's good fun. Um, if if you need to go to mm. sleep, it's really handy for that. Um. Not really the I, uh, after for that it's one, very relaxing mind. is what I'm trying to say it is very <laughs> relaxing <laughs> so yeah I'm doing that and I've also yeah, I've got a couple of videos uh, playing Hunt Showdown um, that I need to put up on YouTube so I've just downloaded those last week's D&D session actually it cut out halfway so I'm editing that so that it can go back on so it will be on the Asylum channel um, if you haven't followed us yet there's the link to go on the Asylum YouTube channel please go and uh, give us a follow on there Otherwise, it's um, it's Fantasy Grounds D and D, but we're kind of we're gonna be using um, real life, like rolling the dice as well. I roll my dice in real life, so yeah. Anyway, come and join us if you haven't given me a follow now. Give me a follow and see us on Friday. Uh, thank you for all the support, everybody, and um, we appreciate it. And hopefully yeah, we'll see you next Monday, you. same time, same bad same channel, same cast, same bad jokes. Not bad <laughs> jokes. Not even amused. Enjoy your <laughs> evening, folks. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night. Bye. Um, it's gone. Oh, that's nice. My desktop. This is love that I'm like sitting in.